He sees his opponent is on gold. And Tato is unable to collect the 10 required for the Drush. I mean, this is an annoying start for Tato. The Stark's Eagle has done so much damage. It's delayed two bills now. And more importantly, Stark now knows his opponent will Drush. So it won't come as a surprise to him. White Death 2 n thank you very much for the 20 viewer host, man. Guys coming in from his stream, welcome. This is game one in a best of five in King of the Desert 2, a big Age of Empires 2 1v1 tournament. Will the players be able to pick the same sieves in the same draft as KOT Dude goes on? No, as I said, Jerry, rounds two and round three, they, they cannot um they cannot e pick civilizations for their draft that they played. So if you, let's say you draft five sieves, but you 3-0 your opponent, the only sieves you can't draft in round two would be the sieves you played with. It's not the sieves you draft. So this is a Dark Age rush from Tato. He's drushing, he's walling. We have a drush from Stark as well, which Aztecs are better with because they have free gold. So because they get that extra gold at the beginning, they're able to make more militia. Stark also scouted that Tato was doing this. He's now bringing Tata's Militia to the top of the hill, where that's a better fight for Stark. And Stark is playing well here. I, I don't like that fight. Not a huge fan of the engagement he just took. But now this is instantly better for him. The whole idea of the Drush is just to delay your opponent and buy yourself some time. And if both are doing it, they're both going to have the same period of time. And they're not building up towards the same options. Now Stark is advancing to Feudal. Let's look at Tato. Tato is not. This looks like a Drushed Fast Castle for Tato. And it's a good map for it. I will give him that. I think Stark should make more Militia. And send four Villagers forward and Tower. Because he, he obviously wants to be aggressive. And he's going to Stone. This is the correct approach from Stark. If he has Man at Arms, he can batter his way through and start Towering Tato. Tato doesn't have any Stone. So Stark needs to pick an area to pressure, and he needs to get the Vils forward, Fat Dragon style. And they'll go forward here in a moment. There they are. Oh, Tato's position is really vulnerable now. But he is Saracens, so he's probably hoping he can use the market to get up real quick. And he has a really strong base, so he's on his way to Feudal Age. He cannot build the tower until he's in Feudal Age. And then, he can only build one. T90 approving of Stark strats. Yeah, I mean, I know that the joke is that T90 doesn't like towers, but you need to tower here. Otherwise, Stark would have Man at Arms in Feudal Age, outside of Tato's walls. You need, you really need to tower. That, That's not the tower you want, though. Like, I, I genuinely feel like you need to tower here, and then you break through... Will that tower even range? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of of the tower location. I think the key here is to tower the walls so you can break through with the man at arms. But he hasn't upgraded them. All that Tato would need to do is send some of his villagers to trees like this, give himself that time. And he will use the market, guys. He will use the market. Okay, now imagine if the first tower from Stark was here and his units were man-at-arms and they were attacking here or there was a tower here and the man-at-arms were attacking here. Stark would already be through. But now Tato goes blacksmith market. He builds three stone walls. He keeps the units out. I'm not a not a fan of the tower, and Tato goes, oh, that's cool, I'll just go to this wood line. Alright, well, market will complete. Tato will keep his villagers alive. Oh, wait! Uh, yep, he'll keep his villagers alive. He'll buy some food, and he needs 90 more food, and then he'll click up to the next stage. Still have no freaking clue what he'll go for. Okay, now he's up. And Stark is trash-talking now. So Stark can maybe buy himself some time. Tatch is like, question mark. Question mark. What are you talking about? Stark could have done so much more, man. 
Is that a stable or an archery range? Tato's making an archery range. Hmm. Well, keep in mind, Stark's base is wide open at home. He's forever futile at this point. He doesn't have the eco to reach Castle Age. So Tato will have a huge Castle Age advantage. Stark's towers were pretty much useless. I think, I think if you guys like trash talk and you guys like drama, I think you're in for a series here. Uh, I, as far as I know, like Stark and Tato aren't good friends or teammates or anything, so this seems like some real drama that's about to begin. So, because they're, they're jabbering a little bit, and it's obviously Stark that's the one that's doing it, it's not Tato. Okay, a tower here from Tato. So it's to keep the units out, and he'll build a gate right at the correct time. Boop! Perfect. As yeah, Stark won't get in. And Tato's going into crossbows in the next stage. So Stark is, is likely upset that his opponent has walled. Stark should be upset that he didn't break through the walls, and he built this useless tower and wasted his own time. What does Stark do now? Because Stark, he has 200 food. He almost needs to go tower defense. If Tato sneaks out at all with crossbows, I think that Stark could die. And the crazy thing about it is, uh, the Saracen Civ pick is a surprise to almost everybody. Except maybe like Tato's teammates or something. Like Again, this is seen as a Civ pick, which... It's not a save that you would want. It's not a save that you would rate in your top five. But Tato feels like he's confident enough to get victory here with Saracens, a save that he wouldn't want versus a stronger player or someone like Hera in rounds two. So what Tato's goal is now is to somehow get past all of this and show up at Stark's base. And Stark should probably wall massively because he has the time to do so and he's doing it. And Tato just now getting Bodkin, but this is not good for Tato. Actually, could have been bad for Tato. It wasn't too bad in the end. Stark didn't kill a single archer. And Stark's running in further. Okay, this is better for him. This is better for Stark. He just needs to buy himself time. He's killed three crossbows. Not bad. And where does Tato go? He'd have to go past the towers that Stark's building. So Stark's doing all right here. I wouldn't wall in Tato, but I would... This is just as good as a wall, right? Now here he's kind of walling in Tato, but here he's he's keeping an eye on him. I think it gets risky now, because Tato has 7 range, it's only 5 range for the skirmishers from uh, Stark. And so Tato could micro down a lot here, and there's not a lot of skirmishers. Stark hasn't clicked up yet, and Tato's killing everything. So Tato will probably be at Stark's base before Stark ever hits Castle Age. This is getting interesting. And now Tato's building a university. He's committing to just crossbows. And what does Stark do now? His villagers have to hide in the tower. He needs a response at home to this. Stark still hasn't clicked up. He still hasn't clicked up to Castle Age. So he'll need defensive towers. He doesn't have stone for defensive towers. See guys, Tato's strategy doesn't give him an option to boom, really. When you go Drush Fast Castle, the goal is to get to a stronger tech, but you don't have a lot of resources. See, his eco is not that great, but what it did do was give him this. So Stark's on the way to Castle Age, his economy is actually better, because he has Wheelbarrow and because he had all the eco upgrades. And Tato didn't have all those when he's been using his vills, but um, what Stark needs now is time. And let's see what he can do to buy himself some time. Still making skirms. But down goes one vill, and it could be more. Okay, th this could be good for Stark. Tato's trapped in here. Let's see what the micro is like. Stark is getting out microed by Tato. Look at that. Well played, Tato. I still think this will be good in the end for Stark, though, because he's killing the gold units. Yep, that's going to be good for Stark in the end. But Tato's sending in more. So... Stark's going Elite Skirm. Tato could go for a Siege Workshop. 
He could consider adding a stable. I think Siege Workshop would be better because you could also use the Siege to kill the towers. He sees Stark on stone. He kills two vills. He'll kill all three. Uh, and I think Tato has a pretty big lead here right now. Oh, the crossbows survived over here as well. I figured they would die. No, they, they will die now, but they were being a bit more annoying. Stark? Stark doesn't have enough skirmishers. He only has four, and Tata will make that three. And now Stark's barracks is going down, and he's thinking of going eagles, but he's lost so much. He doesn't have a lot of eagles yet. And Tato is at 16 military. He's adding the stable. Now the stable makes a bit more sense to help out versus any eagles. Tato's killed another villager. What's that? 29 kills and 15 deaths for Tato in game one. 29 kills. And Stark doesn't have the wood. Remember, his map does not provide him with many wood lines. All of his wood lines can be ranged by crossbows. And Tato's looking to break in now. And he's Saracens. This is why Saracens was picked. For this moment, he's Saracens. So he destroys walls faster. Saracens team bonus, baby. <laughs> so he'll break right through. I don't know if Tato wants to go through because he's not, he's not comfortable uh, going in too far. Or he shouldn't be comfortable going in too far in normal situations because he doesn't know if skirms are looping rounds. But, but uh, yeah, here he comes. And he'll kill another villager. Which gives Tato an 8 villager lead. And Stark doesn't have enough eagles, man. And Tato should know that Stark doesn't have wood. He needs to stay alive here as long as possible. So he can two-shot the eagles. Can he stay in this? There's three down already. Four down. If he stays alive and he should here, it's game over, man. Look at the micro from Tati. And uh, Stark calls the GG. So Tato gets the first win with Saracens versus Aztecs. Saracens versus Aztecs. Tato wanted to save his better sieves for round two. And Stark was just outplayed. Stark was just outplayed. But I'm telling you guys, Stark's mistake, the reason that he fell behind was this tower. That tower doesn't make any sense to me. I've seen people respond to Drush FC hundreds of times. The best approach is to... to Use your militia against the walls or your man-at-arms against the walls and tower. Like, at the very least, because remember, when he built this tower, Tata was still Dark Age. So he would have wall he would have uh, towered here, had man-at-arms here. Tata would have had to palisade wall behind. By the time Tata was in Feudal Age, Stark would have already been here with the next tower. And so it would have made things a lot more complicated. Um... Now, it's easier for me to, hate, to say in hindsight, and you never know what Tato's response would have been, but that's just my assessment of it, and Tato gets the win. Yeah, exactly, Luca. Exactly. You, you have to tower the walls. If you don't tower the walls, it... Because your opponent needs time, right? And so you're, at the very least, forcing them to wall with five or six villagers. Take, they're taking those villagers off resources. Stark didn't really do much with that first tower. He had the right approach. That's why I was getting pumped, because Drush FC is rare. What Tato just did is rare, because players will punish you. The Stark did not. Okay, so Tato gets the first win. Let's look at the civilizations they have remaining. Here we are. Um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong Civ draft. Wait, where's the right Civ draft? I think I have it copied. Okay. So, Tato just used Saracens. <laughs> uh, Stark used Aztecs. That is something else. Uh, we have Japanese, Celts, Magyars, and Chinese remaining for Tato. Stark has Mayans, Slavs, Incas, and Turks. Stark is behind. My guess is he goes for Mayans here. He loves his Mezosivs. He just lost with, with, with a Mezosiv, but Mayans is probably the best pick from the bunch. Best approach is probably to try and even this series up. Isn't Stark famous for his trash, trash talk? Yes. Uh, kind of. I wouldn't call him famous for it. <clears throat> he, uh, he doesn't have a lot of other pros who are fond of it. Let's put it that way. Like, I, I, it's impossible for us to know how serious their comments were. And maybe it was pretty lighthearted, but 
Yeah, hopefully we could talk more about the game, less about the trash talk, right? <laughs> His laziness and salt dog. Thank you guys for the new subs to the stream. Uh, w Rain says failed to be here for the 24 hour stream, sadly, but enjoyed the re YouTube replays. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's all right if you couldn't make it. I understand. It was a busy time. Thank you, irrelevant person, for the seven month resub. Bane is Bane for two. We had I am zero with two as well. And lazy sloth, lazy sloth, thank you guys. And pride of Willie, thank you. Let's do this. Into the next game we are. This is game number two in a best of five between Tato and Stark. And it is Magyar's for Tato. And it is Mayans for Stark. So I wasn't sure what Tato would go with. But again, I find this interesting because I would still consider Magyar's a sieve that would not be in Tato's top five. So this is, again, a civilization that he wants to win with in round one and then save saves like maybe Malians, Berbers, Mayans, Aztecs, Incas, all those to round two. Um, so this wouldn't be, this shouldn't be seen as a sign of disrespect. It's a smart decision from Tato to save his sieves for players he sees as a bigger threat in the next rounds. Uh, however, this is an area of opportunity for Stark. In the first game, Stark had Aztecs, that's a matchup he should take advantage of, and he didn't. So here, it's Mayans versus Magyars. Not that Magyars are a weak sieve by any means, but Mayans would typically win this if we were to compare it to like a lot of even matchups. Um, so anyway, Stark should take advantage of the laming potential. He's sending his eagle forward already, so perhaps he'll think of that. And we can talk about the other strengths the Mayans give him. So the main goal is here for Stark. I have to say his map was not great in the first game. It's not why he lost. His second and third gold uh, next to gigantic hills. But at least this time he has a back wood line option. He has a back stone option. Always important in his minds to have that. And Tato, his base isn't heaven either. He does have two back golds. Uh, but again, you can't TC this one. This one you can. It's up against the edge of the map. It's not easy to collect from. And then Tato's main gold and stone are forward next to a hill. Uh, typical Arabia stuff where you need to be aggressive to lock down resources. I think that Mesosivs struggle versus Scout and Tonight civilizations. What it tends to come down to is how much damage can the Mesosiv do with their man-at-arms and their lame. And then if the Knight civilizations get a lot of Scouts... Their economy is normally strong, and they go directly into Knights and Castle Age, and they can trade well versus Eagles. And uh, if if Mayans go Archers, then you could go maybe Knights and Skirms. So if Tato goes Scouts, it's something to consider. I'm fairly certain we'll see Militia of some kind from Stark. <clears throat> you always have the option of building the Barracks early and going for a Drush. So making Militia, that's huge. And then you have the option of Man-at-Arms, which is slightly more aggressive. And we could even see a Tower follow-up. I noticed that Tato has four on wood, and four on wood is what you would start with if you wanted to go with Militia or Man-at-Arms of your own. So Tato went Drush Fast Castle in game one uh, with Saracens, and it worked. So I, I don't think we'll see a Drush FC here. Tato's map is not set up for it. It's not really the sieve for it, but Magyars do get plus one attack on all their uh, melee units starting in Feudal, so he could try and go for Man-at-Arms himself here. To combat Mayans. Ooh, and just like in game one, a player is scouting the person who's going to drush. Did you notice that? Excellent scouting from Tato. He saw that woman was a gold miner. And now he sees the barracks. So this is huge. I, I know it seems like a small thing, but it's huge. He's not blind to what his opponent's strategy is. He knows that something's coming. And with the barracks timing, that normally indicates Drush, because it's a bit early for Man-at-Arms. If you're going Man-at-Arms, you would place the barracks around... Well, Tato's time, actually. And get Loom, and then go 2 on gold. Yep, Tato will go Man-at-Arms. And then Stark will make Militia. Is he making Militia? Okay, yep, so Stark is rushing. Tato should know that. And he is now walling up. Or planning on walling up Stark. You know, this would be interesting because... Remember Stark went to Feudal Age faster than Tato last game? Ended up going forward to attack Tato and didn't bust down his walls? I, I think Tato 
depending on how many walls Stark has, he might need to make the same decision. And we'll see what the execution's like. Yeah, Drush stands for Dark Age Rush. Essentially, you make three militia, and then you use that to buy yourself some time. And I think this is going to be a very greedy Drush FC. Into Plumes. Stark knows he has the Vax Stone, so he wants to full wall his base, use his militia to give himself time. And Tato should be making men at arms now, and he is. Okay. So, I'm really curious. How quickly will Tato react to the fact that his opponent's still in Dark Age? How quickly will Tato go forward, if at all? The reality of this situation is, if Stark is full walled and Tato doesn't get through at all, and he doesn't go forward to build towers behind those walls, so he can yes. get through, Stark will be in a huge advantage. But it takes so much time. Even if he executes this perfectly, this Drush Fast Castle perfectly, he won't have a castle till 17 or 18 minutes. And these are very forward walls. I don't like the strat on the map, but it's... Tato's got to react to it. And I think he's doing it. He's doing it. Tato's about to hit Feudal. He's sending the required number of villagers forward. It's normally three or four. He sees his opponent still in Dark Age. It's weird to me, though, because Stark's on the way to Feudal now, and he only has 25 vills, so he actually can't Drush Fast, fast Castle off this. <laughs> I just combined Drush Fast Castle and made it Drush... Drush Fast... Drush Fastle. <laughs> it sounds like a weird name. Like, hi, my name is Drush Fastle. Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? And here comes Tato. So where does he choose to bust through? Um... He sees the golds there. This is so good. Notice, notice how he's not trying to tower a wood line. I know he can't scout it, but we can draw some pretty big parallels from game one and game two. And Tato's going to place a tower in the correct area and do the correct thing. Perfect. And then attack the walls and Stark can't wall behind. If Stark did this in game one, I think he wins. Because I don't think Tato would have had the time that he did to get to where he was. And now Stark is... Forced a wall behind, and Stark just now hits the next stage, and he has no military. So look look at what that does. Stark is now pushed off gold. He has to get four villagers to quickly try and wall, which he will just get up, but even still, he'll have to repair this. He has to wait for an archery range, which he doesn't have yet. Everything just falls apart when you try and do what Stark has done, and Tato goes forward like this. There is a gold here, which Stark is going to. But the concern is that Tato's applied so much pressure and Stark doesn't have any way of pushing back just yet. However, Tato doesn't have stone. So since Tato didn't go to stone, he actually can't continue his tower push. Hmm, okay. And a stable from Tato? That's got a, a stable? Making scouts now? I'm, I'm a bit confused by that. I wonder what he's thinking with a stable. He's delayed Stark a lot, but Stark has his stone, which he wants. Stark is still fine, he has his gold. Stark will not fast castle off this, but neither will Tato. Um... Maybe, okay, Tato is on stone now. This makes a little bit more sense. I guess he will continue with the towers. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I just don't get the scouts. Scouts work if he gets through, I suppose. So I would like to see Tato tower. Well, he just needs in, right? So where is he towering now? The tough thing for Tato, guys, is he doesn't know where Stark is. So Stark could be sending archers to Tato right now. And Tato's sending two more villagers forward to tower. Okay, and he's trying to, to take down this palisade wall and get through. I think Tato expects Stark to run out of his base, so he's making the scouts to kill them. That's my guess. Because he's now scouting this area. He, Stark will eventually try and send archers out, and I guess that's why Tato's making scouts. 
Now this tower will deny this gold, but it still leaves Stark with this one, which Tato scouted. And Stark has already towered defensively. This is pretty close now. I, I think that Stark will eventually get the plumes, which worries me for Tato. Stark definitely has the eco with Mayans to be able to go up to Castle H and get the plumes in this game. He's held on long enough. Now granted, Tato, he's done a good job. He has denied the golds, but all that Stark needs is stone, one stone and one gold. And Tato won't find out that his opponent has this towered until he gets there. Oh, but he could? Okay. I mean, it's taken some time, but he'll just bust through here. The archers don't have fletching. Tato will build this tower, and he'll go right through here, and Stark will stonewall this. He has to stonewall this. And he will. You know, it's kind of funny because Stark called Tato scum for doing this exact same thing, walling up last game. Who's scum now, boy? Nah, it's, it's part of the game. It's what you should do. I know those walls are short. Um, it's, it's a mod. You can't jump over the walls, unfortunately. Wait, how much, how much HP does that wall have? I feel like there's a wall in there I can't click. Is it just me or is there like a half-built wall in there? Because of the mod. No, he's attacking this one. Okay. He's taking that down pretty quick with the hill advantage. Vills against Feudal Age walls. Pretty good. Just ask the arena players out there. Yep, and Stark at least has to build another tower. Um, so, Tato's economy, pretty weak beyond all of this. He sent quite a few Vills forward. I see him building a market now. He has a lot of idle villagers, some T90 farms at home, which he needs to address. But, well, no, there's no buts about it. I, I like Stark's position more. It's silly because he's been so defensive. But the reason he built all of these walls was to build up towards Plumes eventually. And at the moment... He's doing just fine. Really makes me question the uh, the scouts. Because the scouts haven't done anything for Tato. He not only made many of them, but he got bloodlines. So that's a pretty big food investment. And he obviously didn't get any success from that. Didn't gain anything from that. And Stark's on the way up. He uh, will go for Crossbow and Vodkanero first. He doesn't even have Fletching right now. He's not concerned about it. He wanted Castle Age. Yeah, Fletching's on the way. Tato's tower will not go up once Fletching completes. And Stark has the stone. So what Stark can do in the next stage is he can build his castle here if he's concerned about the towers. Build his castle here, kill these towers, and then he'd have his gold back. He can fully stonewall here if he'd like. I mean, for the most part, he's stonewalled on this side, but... If he's concerned, I don't think he should be. He can wall there. Tato is Magyars. Uh, they make knights. They could go elite skirm, but Tato doesn't have the resources to go elite skirm, as far as I know. Ooh, and he's just getting horse collar. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, so these farms are going to expire quite frequently. Yeah, there's, there's one. And so his eco is pretty weak, actually. How many stones does Stark have? Uh, Stark has that stone right there. That's all he needs. I think his other stone's out uh, here. This is Star Stark's other stone. Ooh. Okay, Stark had spears in there. I wonder if he's trying to mind game Tato at all, making Tato think he's going eagles. Nah, eagles wouldn't make any sense. So. Interesting gates from Stark. He's getting his crossbow and bodkin arrow upgrade. Honestly, he doesn't even need to be in a rush for the castle just yet. Uh, could add town centers first to go for the eco approach. And Tato is attempting to track these units because he knows they're coming. He sees them. And Tato will have a stable at home. He'll have a tower at home. And he has that stable forward, of course, and they'll all be making knights. Stark's about to build the castle. He has 600 stone. And he already has the military advantage, but... And Tato at least sees this coming. Uh, tower doesn't have fletching. 
I, I fear for Tato, I really do. The fact that he's going into a siege workshop and all Stark needs to do is add town centers and plumes. Everything that Stark can do is good for him. Tato's siege workshop edition is just a defensive move. Stark is sitting pretty behind these walls, man. So while I must say it was a great move from Tato to go forward, it certainly delayed Stark. Stark, great move to hold. And this gets complicated for Tato now. This is not easy, you know? Five idols inside the tower, he has to address that. And he, he was attacking crossbows and it'll be plumes eventually. So nice micro from Stark, he's giving himself some more time. Uh, two town centers for him at home. And still, still wondering where he'll build that castle. And Stark microing the light cav down. And he will win this fight if he stays there and Tato just runs, yep. So Tato's two town centers, he's a slight villager lead. Slight villager lead. But he'll be going with knights, no skirmishers yet. He doesn't have the eco to go skirms. He's almost forced to make knights and a few scorpions and maganels and hold. And, and pray that he doesn't take losses until his economy's at the point where he can transition. Okay, there's Stark's castle. I don't like the castle, actually. That's interesting to me. I Okay, I guess he has this tower here, which he could garrison. He still has the other gold, but I, I think that a castle more forward could have been done there. Maybe Tato's man-at-arms are what annoyed that, or prevented that. Scorpions are a nice move here. Um, scorpions are also cheaper as well. So, there you go, he just damaged a few crossbows, I like it. Obviously, Maganel would be better, but it's harder for players to kill the Scorpions. Well, not necessarily, but the Scorpions are fine. We'll leave it at that. So, Stark is making his Plumed Archers. He's on three town centers. He's level on Vils with Tato. Tato has knights with full upgrades in Castle Age. Uh, let's let's talk about resources for Tato because I believe for now Stark should get his resources back. Stark will probably get this gold back and this gold back. So let's just pretend he does and look at Tato's resources. So he has a gold here. He also has another gold here. His stone is on the front. His gold is on the front. For the most part, he has TCs in all of his vulnerable areas though. What Tato can do is, is try and get relics soon. Um, this will probably go late game. And it's very easy for Stark to fight without relics because plumes are so cheap. Put halberdiers in front and it's almost always GG. So perhaps if Tato looks for the extra gold piles and looks for the extra relics, he can snag them because this game will probably go late. And he's already doing that. He sees the golds there, so he'll keep, he'll, he'll keep an eye on that. Eventually, if he gets the stone, he can castle. There's also another gold up here, which he's just missing out on. But look at Stark's plumes now. Here they are. And Stark could click up to Imp soon on two castles. It's so tough. It's so tough to beat this. And Tato's eco upgrades have not been nicely timed. He's just now getting Bosol, which is the Castle Age wood upgrade. He had Horse Collar really late. He got to Castle Age and then got Horse Collar, which is Feudal Age upgrade. And then he got Bosol at this point in Castle Age. Mining Stark Stone will deny castles. Nice move. Um, I mean, kind of, kind of, right? But it's not a, it's not a move that's big enough where you'll look back at it and say like, that was the thing, you know? It's probably more of convenience factor because Tata wanted stone, and he's paying the price for being out here now and not taking the stone into his base. He loses the bills, and Stark takes a seven villager lead, and he's about to click up to the Imperial Age. Yep. He'll click up. Tato, if he wants to defend, has to make knights, which costs food and gold. So he won't have the resources to click imp. He has to really hold with castle age units. He has to hold with castle age units and towers, I guess. I, I, I don't know if there's a lot Tato can do here. Stark has a vill lead and his ideal unit. And he has Mayan Economy. 
He's getting he has his golds back. Not like he needed his Mayans. He currently has uh he has very little gold, getting thumb ring. Sending the crossbows back over to this side. I would like to see Stark. Okay, this would be the time for Tata to take an engagement. Right before the plumes get upgraded. <laughs> see, this is the benefit of plumes over crossbows. If those are crossbows, these units are dead. But they're plumes, so they can run. However, they could still die, and they should still die if Tato plays it correctly. And good positioning on the knights there. Oh, right into the scorpion! Okay, Stark dodged the scorpion. I think he wants to protect this hill, Stark, and castle on that side. Uh, but anywho, Tato, Tato's still in trouble. He has a lot of knights, but if these ever get to be plumes plus pikemen, or just a big ball of elite plumes with bracer, there's not much Tato could do in castle age. So he's bought himself the time. We'll see if he can get his economy right. He has a few more vills than uh, Stark does now. And Stark will probably... Oh, he's taking the stone. So it is interesting that that's his stone. He can't take that one. Normally players would be at around three or even four castles as Mayans playing this style, but he doesn't have that. So it's a good point from the Twitch chat. And oh, Tato sees this because he had the outpost here earlier. So as I said, Tato preparing for the future and he will not only kill these villagers, but he could kill the crossbows before they get Bracer. So Stark sent the plumes out, Tato found them, Tato killed a bunch of them. He sends the crossbows out now and Tato kills them, and then he sends the vills out and they die. And now Tato's on the way to Imp, has he done enough? Many of you might be thinking, T90, why is Tato not making skirms? He doesn't have the eco setup to do that, and he still will not have the eco setup to do that. He needs to continue making knights. He has to start with Cavalier. If he if he puts hundreds of wood into just the archery ranges for Skirmisher, if he puts hundreds of resources into food and gold upgrades, which would be like Bracer and, and all of that for Skirms, it would, it would not work out. He would get overrun. So he has to continue with the knight production, and then eventually he can transition. That would be the same for Stark. Though I would say Stark right now has the resources to make Pike. Tato does not. Stark could. He goes for Elite Plume instead. And I think Tato should avoid any fights until he gets his upgrades. Remember, he'll get the free attack upgrades. That can be helpful in any fight. Scorpion! <laughs> Micro! That was actually pretty good. But it does nothing to the plumes. <laughs> If Tato gets a Maganel shot, it would be an absolute blessing. Maganels, they won't help much. Tato's producing a lot of knights. He'll have the resources for the more, most important upgrades. Cavalier and plate barding armor. He also is camping and keeping an eye on relics and golds. Uh, good example of that, again, is this outpost he built earlier. Good example is this scorpion. Good example is this monk. Okay, he's not protecting, he's taking, but... Okay, so now I think Stark needs to be cautious. He should know Tato's going cavalier. I think he needs to be very cautious. It's 33 military for Tato. If Stark has ventured too far towards Tato's base, Stark could lose his plumes. I think Stark needs to wait for Pike. And also, this wouldn't be a bad idea to reposition things, but but Tato can see a lot of the map because of the outposts and because of the tower, so he sees the plumes are coming. And those plumes will die now. Oh, that's so annoying! Wait, did the TC range them? I guess the TC ranges them. Okay, Stark has his barracks. He's getting Halberdier. Okay, now it's difficult for Tato. He hasn't killed the big ball of plumes. This is a close game, though. 150 population for both. Are you kidding me? Are those plumes really going to stay there? Crazy positioning, man. And Tato still probably not in a position to uh, add skirms, which is a scary thing for him. He has a lot of gold. He has a lot of gold. I, I don't think Tato can take fights if Stark has Halb in front of his plumes. I just don't see how. He also can't hit Stark's eco. So he can't counterattack. Stark is fully secured. 
So t it's either kill these plumes right now and then buy yourself a little bit more time to get Paladin or maybe mix in Skirms or Tato's in big, big trouble. And he sees the plumes running. Stark is trying to uh, flee this. And if Stark gets here, if he sees this hole, he might just sit his plumes there. So I think he'll be okay for now. And Tato's getting Paladin. Tato's getting Paladin. Something you see so rarely in 1v1s. It's probably the only thing that could save him. Just pure Paladin production. He unfortunately still does not see this gold, which would help with Paladin production. He's looking for it. He does not see it. Unlucky. And that is a lot of military. And Stark can afford to be fully popped with military. The beauty of the Mayans is you can have 100 villagers and you can have 100 military full upgrades at this time of the game. Full upgrades on the plumes. Full upgrades on the halbs once Arson and Blast Furnace is completed. And there's choke points for the plumes and halves as well. I don't think Tatsu can kill that. He has to kill it. But I don't see how he'll have the time. I don't see how he will have enough to kill that many halberdiers. And that many plumed archers. That is nuts. It's kind of hard to explain. But for Tato to, to have the time. If Tato tried to build... Let's say 5 to 10 archer ranges, whatever you think would be the appropriate amount. And then, you know, invest the food and the wood into making skirms, and then get all the upgrades. If Tato tried to do that, because you would need fletching, you would need bodkin arrow, you would need bracer, you would need chemistry, you need the defense upgrades. If he tried, he would die. He would have been dead already. The only thing that's saving him is the fact that he went for full, uh, full paladin, really. It's kind of hard to explain, though, so I can understand why you guys would think that. Because skirmishers counter plumes, they counter helps. Look at that trebuchet. Look at it. Look at him. Dodgeball. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, Tato did just complete the Onager upgrade. He's gonna have to get very, very lucky. Maybe maybe he can use Onager to cut the trees. And Stark thinks he's in a good position and Tato cuts the trees. Okay, Stark will see Onager for the first time here. Can Tato get a shot? He will not. Tato has 43 paladins versus 96 plumes and halves. Oh my god, that's insane. I just, I don't think Tato has the resources to fund paladins nonstop. That's the issue with paladins. It's not that they're not strong. They're very strong. It's can you make them long term? After you lose this 40, can you make 40 more? Stark can make 300 more plumes. 300 more halves, he has the economy for it. But you cannot afford to make more paladins. And I think for that reason, the end could be coming in. What a fight for Stark. I think the series will be tied up here. Now, the, the unit control there was not ideal. Let me just say that. It was not ideal for Stark. But still, 170 military for him, and Tato has to make pure paladin. I don't think Tato can do it, guys. I don't think he can do it. So Tato went forward, he did everything right, he delayed Stark a bit, but Stark was equal to it, and this is why Mayans are strong, this is why Stark wanted Mayans, and Tato, he's losing his Paladins, nice Onager shot, but he'll lose that as well, and the Trebs will start killing buildings. Uh, you know, I, I do see this castle on the left, so Tato is going to control these golds, possibly, but I don't think he has enough food or gold. And Stark, look at his resources, guys. Mayans are obscene. 2,000 gold. He has 90 military. And he's at 2,000 gold. Just Mayan things, man. And here are the skirmishers from Tato, but it's too little too late. He's, he's probably dead, which means this series will be tied up one-to-one. -one, and I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, this is going to go to five games. When I looked at the brackets and I saw this, I got really excited because Stark is C24, but I believe that he could beat Tato. He could beat many of the players in the top 10 if he has his day. He's shown that in other events recently. And also, Tato went for a draft, which kind of prepped him for round two. So he he won with Saracens, believe it or not, in game one. But Magyars? 
Uh, he could have gone for stronger sieves. He could have gone for Malians, could have gone for Berbers. Now Stark is considering going Eagles to counter the Skirms. I know I'm, I'm acting as if this is over yet uh, already, and I know that might be a, a bit disrespectful, but I truly think the game is Stark's to lose now. Tato is strapped for food. He has 10 food. He's making skirms, and eagles will be on the way for Stark. And I think once Tato sees the eagles, he'll call it. He'll also lose his relics. Yeah, so he lost the castle over here, Tato. He'll see the elite eagle upgrade soon. And no paladins anymore. Doesn't have the gold for it. So just a few eagles will kill all the skirms. And Stark still maintaining 90 military with a thousand gold. The Eagles have El Dorado as well, by the way. So 100 HP on these now. It's insane. Perfect strat for Mayans. Nice try from Tato. Tato says GG. Stark says G. And we will move on to game three in King of the Desert 2. All right. So Stark with the G. <laughs> uh, again, making this interesting. So I'll get your Gs or GGs in the chat. Let's look at the achievements on this one. What this came down to is that's Mayans Forte. It is always ideal for Mayans to get the plumes. I shouldn't say always. There are obvious exceptions, but there, that's what you would want. Stark, it wasn't always convincing, but he got his walls up. He protected himself. And Tato, while he went for the right strat, I think going forward was the only way he survives there. And he certainly delayed himself. He didn't do enough. And uh, perhaps, you know, I, I can't really speculate over what Tato could have done differently. I wasn't a huge fan of his second tower, but anyway, well played Stark. He deserves the credit for that one. Great game and what will be a great best of five, guys. The score is now one to one. T90 official, do you think that if Berbers get access to Parthian Tactics in the future patch, it'd make them too OP? I don't think Berbers need any changes because they're already a strong Sif. I can leave it at that. <laughs> I know that might not be the answer you're looking for, but yeah, I don't think Berbers need any changes. All right. So Tato's civilizations. He chose Saracens. He chose Magyars. Those are off the list. He has Japanese, Celts, and Chinese. Now, Stark has used two of his strongest picks, Mayans and Aztecs. He has Slavs, Incas, and Turks. So Turks was a questionable pick for Stark. Uh, so Turks and Saracens were weird ones. But maybe Stark wants to full wall and go Janissaries. I mean, it is Stark after all. So those are the options they have going into Game 3. Game three will be starting within a few minutes, guys. Uh, before it starts, thank you to everyone who's stopping by. It's been awesome games today. I uh, just accidentally closed out of the game room. My bad. Uh, should be back in. Perfect. Maganels has been going crazy on the stream today, gifting subscriptions. Thank you, Maganels. Again, uh, Mr. Matlock HD, thank you. Welcome back for five months, man. Armchair Dan. Uh, Bukum, thank you guys for the primes. I had a host from 5XV3 who hosted the stream with a few viewers. Welcome to the stream, man. Thank you for that. Hope your stream went well. And Human Clay, thank you for the four months. Stratone donated $25 right when that game started. He said, much love from Philadelphia. It's really incredible, the community you created. Love the positive energy from both you and the community every stream. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I, uh, I agree. I, I, I've... I've worked really hard to get where I am, um, and I'm really proud of the individuals that are in my Twitch community and, and YouTube community. You guys don't realize how much you make an impact on me. Like, I I can be positive, but you guys make it easy to be positive. You guys make it easy to, to do what I do. So thank you, everyone, who's here in the chat today. Jerbot, I do not think that Tata won the first game because of his Civ. No, I think he could have done that with other Civs, but being Saracen's kind of helped. I still think Stark could have won game one if he would have towered better, but what's done is done. Barks, thank you. Uh, salutes out to CVAD. CVAD, thank you very much for hosting the stream with one viewer. Appreciate it, man. I know you've been in the chat all day, so I doubt you're streaming. It's always awkward. If you were streaming and you just hosted me but didn't have many viewers, I feel bad, but troll hosts are appreciated as well. <laughs> Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. 
Okay, my friends, game number three, Celts and Slavs. All right, well, for community game fans, people are going to be pissed at me for bringing up community games because I, I didn't get to do them this Friday. But for community game fans, you guys have probably seen these civs a lot in nothing games. Celts and Slavs are really good when it comes to, to eco, uh, infantry, and siege. So we could see very similar things with these civilizations. Uh, Tato's in the blue. He's playing as the Celts. And then we have Stark, as Stark is playing as the Slavs. Both civs are strong. I like Slavs more in 1v1s, though. Slightly more. Um, so let's point out the differences. So first and foremost, Slavs have overpowered farmers right now. Most people agree that Slav farms are insanely good and too good at the moment. Uh, Stark. Oh, God. I thought he was going to lose that fill. I, I almost had a heart attack. But anyway, so once the farms come out, it's very strong for Slavs. Um... Slavs then open up with scouts frequently because when you go scouts, you, you make farms and you have a lot of food income. Slavs also get bloodlines, which means that they can go scouts and they can go into knights. They even get full upgrades on cavalier in the next stage, being the uh, imperial age. You compare the, the eco and the horse line and it's a bit different. So Celts, they don't have faster farmers, but they have faster lumberjacks. In theory, since they chop wood faster they get wood sooner to make more farms so uh, it's similar in some aspects and uh, then they do not get bloodlines and while they get cavalier and they get paladin they have crappy upgrades on them so you won't see Celts going with knights usually um, they tend to go with man-at-arms to open up into archers into siege into infantry but they normally avoid knights Looking at the maps, I I see this and I, I winced. This is bad. We freaking Mount Everest here in the desert. This is crazy. Look at that hill. <laughs> that is a bit extreme, man. That is a gigantic hill. And Tato's two golds are next to it. So that's tough. Uh, his main gold's fine. His main stone is fine as well. But the elevation elevation on the left and the right can be tough for Tato here. Stark's base is a lot more flat. He has stone options on the back. He has wood options on the back. He has plenty of golds and walling potential. He can wall here. He can wall here. He can wall there. I mean, it's not something you'll do right now, but it's something Stark can do. And I'll be honest with you guys. I look at the sieves. I look at the maps. I like Stark's position more. And I'm curious now. I'm curious. A lot of people thought that Tata would win this 3-0 or 3-1. I think this will go to the last game, and with the sieves that they've chosen, it makes it interesting. I think if Tata loses this one, uh, he could be at a disadvantage in all future games, depending on how it's played out. Big question mark I have over Stark sieves is that he has Turks in there still, but I guess we'll find out. And Tato... He is building a barracks, so he will start off with the Drush. Delay Stark a bit, buy him some time, and it's got to be Scouts for Stark, surely. Normally I'd say Scouts because that's what Slavs often do, but perhaps if you expect infantry from Celts, you make your own and go Man-at-Arms. It is four on wood for Stark. Very open in the center of the players. So you see this space? Very open. So map control will be key here. That's interesting. There's a straight shot right to the other TC. And Stark's on the way up. Uh, no barracks for him, so he'll go scouts. And Tato is make, just now making his militia. So the idea behind a drush is to buy time. The idea behind a drush is to, to normally wall. And I guess Tatsu could pull it off, but Drashfast Castle isn't exceptionally strong with Celts. You're building up towards crossbows, which you get full upgrades on in Castle Age. Um, at least attack and defense upgrades, but you lack thumb ring, and I'm not too sure about a Drashfast Castle here from Tatsu. He could also Drush and go up to Feudal, get to the Archer line as fast as possible. Stark arrives, and ooh... 
Stark, or Tato arrives, and Stark's building his barracks here. And Tato thinks twice about going in near the TC fire. And Stark walls out the Drush. That is a perfect... A perfect response to the Drush, which I believe surprised Stark, because he didn't see it coming in. Stark is a very smart player, guys. I know he's on the slower side. But he's very, very smart. He's similar to Doubt in that he's good because of his decision making. I would consider the Tat Tato the faster player and probably the player with better micro, but but Stark's decision making is why he has success. Uh, he has not built a stable yet though. So Tato has bought himself some precious time here. And there's the stable now for Stark. So just the fact that Tato arrived to the woodline, I guess, delayed the stable. Always a bit helpful to do that. Tato, it's not a Drush FC, so it's not a Drush Fast Castle. What's he doing here? Does he want to tower the woodline? That's not a wallville. That's a forwardville. Any lions out here? Uh, There's camels. And there's ostriches. Oh god. Ostrich win. MBL, I know you're out there. <laughs> MBL was complaining about the ostriches prior to the tournament. And it cracks me up. Fucking ostriches, man. There's no ostriches. It's free food. It's free food. It's not balanced. That was my best MBL impression. How to do. Um, so there she goes. Fortunately for uh, those who are interested in balance, the Ostrich is not uh, closer to one player. Tato has added another Militia, and he'll add a Spearman, he'll go Man-at-Arms. So this is a bit unorthodox, but it, it works. And how did that scout get in? How did that how did that scout get in from Stark? I was too busy talking about Ostriches. Stark needs to be careful. Nice micro Tato. Nice micro Tato. I think the guy ran around this way, so... Okay, back back to the... The female ville. Stark does not see her, and that's a tower ville. That's a really nice tower. That's a long journey, but that is a really nice tower from Tato. Oh, and where'd those goats come from? There's so much food. Did Tato steal the goats? It's a goat heist, guys. Not that Stark would want that over slab farmers at this stage, but... I don't know. I, I don't really love Tato's position currently. He, he's just now getting Man at Arms. He will get the hill and he'll choose to take the fight because that's the best time to. And let's see. Stark had a lot of scouts in that engagement. He loses two. Oh man, I, I think it's a bit stubborn from Stark. Did he need to fight there? Or could he have waited? Because that the Man at Arms weren't doing anything to him and now he has three scouts in that group which are basically dead. I think if he waits a little bit, makes another scout or two, or waits for a few skirms, he cleans it up no problem. Score and military count deceiving because three of Stark's scouts are a bit useless. And there's the tower. Cackle says he never found the goats. Stark found them and Tato sold them back. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I... It wasn't an issue for Stark, obviously, because he pushed so many zebras. It's, it's rather common that players will miss out on goats when they push as many zebras as Stark did. Um, Tato. Interesting game from him. I mean, he researched Wheelbarrow at a different time. He is now adding more militia and more men-at-arms. I guess he's uninterested in ever adding any archers here or any skirmishers, which you sometimes transition to after men-at-arms. I wouldn't worry about the ostrich thing, guys. It was just a, a joke. <clears throat> Tato's coming forward with two more villagers, so he he's confident that he can tower this wood line as well. To me, seems incredibly risky. But if he towers it, Stark will have to go over here. Okay. Tato also sees that Stark's scouts are on this side. And Stark will... Oh, so he'll see the tower going up. He got Town Watch a while back. So he'll see the tower going up. It's not easy for him to build the defensive tower against that, though. You could place one there, but you can't get all your villas around it, so I think Tata will get that up. Stark, are you going to try and stop that? 
I wonder if he doesn't notice. He has to notice. Okay, yeah, he notices now. Kid? Oh, Tato, build the house! Tato, if you don't build the house, you could lose the bills and lose the tower. Oh, goodness gracious. Heart attack central there. I thought for sure he was going to forget about that. G great awareness from Tato, who, I'll give him credit, has bought himself a ton of time here. He didn't need to make a range. He's now denied two wood lines from Stark, and, uh... <laughs> he was thinking about going to this one next. Stark has seen her. So Tata will have to think twice about it. Stark will cook up to Castle Age soon. Uh, he still has some access to wood. He, he's fine, but it, it'll make it awkward later on. And Tato can't or shouldn't be able to push in here because of the amount of skirmishers. And Tato quickly realizes and tries to get scale mail. Yeah, that's why, that's why I felt... As though the second tower was weird. Tato will get it up, but he doesn't have as much control as he thinks with the units he has. And Stark's on the way to Castle Age now. So all that has really happened is Stark has had to switch a few wood lines. He still has his gold. His farming's still fine. And he's, he's in a stronger place economically and with military. Scale mail really helped with the with the man at arms and Stark run back. Run back a little bit, man. Hit and run with those skirmishers. Right when I say Stark's in a better position with military, you notice how he threw away his units? It was immediate. <laughs> Stark's in a better position with military. Immediately. Five skirms dead, three scouts dead. <laughs> no micro whatsoever. Microing before? After T90 says something, no micro. It's not the end of the world, but could have been slightly better. Okay, so this is where I get to show you guys how obscene these farmers are. So Stark has 500 food, and he has a total of 17 farmers. Okay? So just watch his food. Obviously, he's made scouts. He's researched skill... Uh, mail, or scale barding, sorry, which is the defense upgrade on his scouts. He's researched bloodlines. Wait, wait till he's in Castle Age with 17 farmers. <laughs> He'll be at over 800 food. <laughs> 800 food. It's crazy. Tato's positioning is nice, and I think that's something he'll try and take advantage of in a very awkward way. A tower... Uh, is this Vivi or is this Tato? I don't, I don't, don't necessarily understand. Have to be honest, uh, but it still could be okay for Tato. I think what he'd like to do eventually is use Pikemen versus the Knights and then his own Knights versus the, the Skirms, but he's not in Castle Age fast enough. And the Spearmen versus the Skirmishers will just die. I mean, Stark is the lead. No other way to say it, guys. Stark has the lead in this game. I don't know what Tato can build up towards. He makes Spearmen. He probably loses them to Stark Skirmishers. If he tries to boom, Stark will outboom him. If he makes Knights, he has worse Knights. The good thing for Tato is that he has some control over Stark's base, so perhaps he does try and boom and just keep Stark's military at bay. He definitely won't go World Raiders. He definitely won't go World Raiders at this point, but uh, he'll, he'll make knights out of the stable, but it's very awkward. But he knows exactly where Stark's getting res, so that's that's the logic here. And he wants to deny the whole right-hand side, apparently, with another tower there. Ooh, Stark ran through those pikemen. He lost HP there, and his skirmishers are getting pushed back by Tato. And, oh, Stark's going man-at-arms, so Stark wants to go long swordsman against this. He's scared of the pikes, and Tato's base is fully walled, so Stark will not get in. Yeah, I think Tato will add a third TC soon, and he'll just go pikes, and siege, and, and monks, and, and try and boom, but delay Stark as much as humanly possible. Tato, ooh, loses the knight there. Um, so if Tato will force Stark into going infantry, it's 
actually good for him. And Stark broke through the wall. Stark broke through the wall. Didn't expect that to happen. And Stark will just leave. Don't leave, man. Oh, I feel like if he runs in, he could send one night here, one night here, one night here. I guess it doesn't really suit Stark's play style to do that, but... He got in and he just waltzed out. He has a mobile unit versus slow defensive pikemen. I think he could have at least ran to the other side to see what's over there. Well, okay, so better eco for Stark for sure. But Tatsu's positioning is better. And he did get the tower up on this side, and he's building another one over here. How did she even get in there? The funny thing is, I haven't seen Stark react to this yet. I d either he doesn't care or he doesn't notice, and I'm leaning towards he doesn't notice. He's already lost one farmer here. Are you kidding me? He's going to lose two more vills to this one tower, which should have never gone up in the first place. Another one? Another one? <laughs> oh, another one featuring DJ Khaled. Oh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> How did Tato get those towers up? Explain that to me. Well, Stark goes for long swordsman, no defense upgrades, and so he's he's next to Pikeman and the choke point, and there's a tower here. I I think Tato can hold this, at least for the time being, until his own long swordsman upgrade uh, finishes. It hasn't been super convincing from Stark, you know, he's booming well, four TCs, but he's giving Tatsu a lot of control. And guys, what do Celts typically do in late game? They go for World Raiders. And that would, World Raiders would be better than Champions, which is what Slavs would have. Now I think this villager will, will finally die, uh, but Tatsu will be as annoying as possible with her, and he'll try and send the pikemen around to keep that up. Oh wait, Tato kills one monk. He kills two monks with the Maganel. And good Maganel shot on the long swords as well. The knights from Stark are too busy cleaning up these towers that should have never gone up in the first place and he's losing his long swords. Now Tato, at home, one, two, three town centers. You can tell he's focusing a lot in the fights because he, some of the TCs are idle and there's some fills around, but Nobody's perfect. Another Monastery for Tato. This is a really exciting game. This whole series has been better than any series I've seen in the tournament so far. Uh, I mean, I, I could be biased because I, I stated publicly that I felt like this was the most exciting one. And maybe it's more exciting for me because I thought that going into it. But this has been really exciting. And... You could argue that Tato's eco is a bit stronger because he hasn't had the idle time. Like, it could be argued, but... I, I would still say Stark's economy is better because Slav farms are OP. But he's now forced to repair a TC. And Tato, he's completely fine to do what he would like at home. And the towers are still staying up. This is, this is becoming an issue for Stark. It's very cramped. For the second game in a row, Tato's eco upgrades are, are delayed. He won't be excited to see that, but he has the lead, and he has great control over Stark. And Stark has put a ton of wood into repairing this TC. But now he has more upgrades on the Long Swordsman. Now he has more of them in general. Let's see what happens. Tato's Scorpions might not last very long if the Knights are in the mix, and Tato needs two conversions. Can he get one? He gets one. He got two. Stark sends his knights versus the scorpions, but the knights died to the pikemen. Now, I could be wrong, but I thought I saw Tata researching long swordsmen earlier, but I haven't seen many from him. He went for the scorpions instead, and scorpions are pretty vulnerable here. And this evens it out a bit. I mean, 90 population for both. This game could not be closer. But I, I like that for Stark. I think that Stark just needed Tato off of his back. Stark needed some room to breathe so he can build a castle. Build a castle to secure the front and then go in. Tato didn't make long swordsmen. He was just making pikemen. And Tato's four TCs. Where are his stones at? What's his stone situation like? 
His eco seems a, a bit sloppy because of the aggressive nature of this game. Oh, his other stone's here. So he would actually have to buy future stone for future castles. For any castles, that is. As Stark has come back. Stark has 12 more villagers. Stark is getting chainmail armor. And Stark will build the castle. Stark is in the lead again. So Tata won the first game in the series with Saracens versus Aztecs. It was looking good for him. Then last game, Stark had a great strategy with Mayans. Stark won the game in Imp. This time around, we talked about the benefits of Slavs and Celts. Felt like Slavs are stronger. Tatsu applied pressure, but he was unable to hold it. And if Stark uses the market to sell some of that food, which is coming in at lightning pace, he'll be Imp before Tatsu is. And he'll deny the stone. I think Tatsu needs to get a castle up on this hill. Right here. Remember, this hill is going to be a nightmare for him. If the barracks weren't here, I'd say you could build it at the top, but the barracks are there, so maybe build it here instead. Uh, but, okay, Tato's up. I assume he's going World Raiders. That's got to be part of the plan here. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. 110 population for both. This is a sick series. Okay, Tato has the stone now. If you build the castle too far forward, then your opponent could treb you, but then again, you know, Tato builds his here, his trebs would have to fire from this area, and then Stark, if he wants to treb this, his, his trebs have to fire from here, so it will still be exposed. I think Stark could have been an imp a bit earlier. He went for chainmail armor when he wasn't taking many fights. And his imp time is now later than Tato's, which is a surprise to me. And that could be a concern, because Tato can then get his upgrades faster, and more importantly, his trebuchets. But I don't know if you want... I don't know if it's a priority to kill Slav castles. It's a priority to kill Celt castles, because they want world raiders. So maybe Tato should just get his world numbers up. Because Stark loses a castle, it's annoying because he can't make trebs. But he he will be producing his units out of his barracks. He will obviously need his own trebuchets, so. though. And more farmers now. Really pretty farms, I have to say. Also, Stark has two castles. So if he sees the castles there and he does, he can go for two trebs immediately in Imp. And Tata will start with just one. Uh, and Tato's making long swords, so maybe he doesn't think that he can afford to go World Raiders. Which, in all honesty, is kind of his situation. Because he has one castle. Normally, you'd want around three at this stage to justify going Wodes. So, I guess it's a smart decision. It's not ideal, but it's the smart decision to go into Champions. Notice how Tato has so much map control on the sides. There's this one dude from Stark, and he's looking to build an outpost there. Um, oh, Tato sees him, and Tato could stop that from happening. But it's just... It's interesting that Tato can get these extra gold piles and, and stone piles and the relics as well. Oh, Druzina's on the way for Stark? He's getting Druzina... Before two-handed swordsman. He does have a lot of long swords. And he's also getting conversions. Tato's long swords, they will soon be champions, but I think this is a bit wasted. And I don't think Tato ever expected Tato uh sorry, I don't think yeah, Tato ever expected Stark to be going immediately into Drazina. Stark is not worried about trebuchets, apparently. He's getting conscription first, and he wants to win this with full champion. And his champions will definitely be better, will definitely be stronger than the Celt champions now that Druzina is completed. Oh my god, look at this from Tato, though. Look at this one knight from Tato. I saw it a moment ago, killing a long swordsman. Or, sorry, uh, yeah, it was a long swordsman. But look at the damage this guy has done. Hmm. Well, Tato does have a hill. He will have the castle fire. And... I'm still unsure on if he'll get the relics. It seems like Stark has stopped him from getting a few. 
Just things to think about. But Tato can't fight this, that's for sure. He needs to pack up, and he needs to back up. Does he think otherwise? I... The thing about Drazina is, you don't know when they've researched it. And Tato's getting destroyed in this fight. It's not even close. And now Stark, you know, keeping his castle up can send trebuchets forward. Tato's in trouble now. Tato's in big trouble. The Drazina champions are incredibly good. Funded, of course, by the Fast Slab Farmers. And Stark, he'll kill the castle, which will deny any option of World Raider from Tato. And as long as Stark keeps the production up, I think he should win this fight. He even has more upgrades. Like, beyond Drazina, he has the last defense upgrade. Tato doesn't. And he's also getting conversions. Tato's repairing his castle. Don't see this working out here. But Stark, funny enough, needs more food. <laughs> he's not... He doesn't have many barracks either. He needs more production buildings. He needs more reinforcements. And there we go. He kills Tato's castle. We needed we, a T90 Drazina <laughs> emote for all the questions about it. Yeah, so Drazina gives the champions for Stark some splash damage. So... I mean, it's a, it's a huge deal. It's also hugely expensive. It's 1,000 food and 800 gold to research that, which is why I was surprised he went for it. Uh, but, you know, Slav economy, man. He can afford it. He, can, he has the better unit, but he's taking fights with small groups. He needs to wait. He's sending them in one by one. And Tato does have one relic. Uh, he... He could get more, but there's a lot to focus on right now. I believe he'll switch into Light Calf and Raid. 155 population for Tata, 155 for Stark. This is hype. This is awesome. Rarely do you see Champion v. Champion. Maybe I'm overrating Drazina here. Uh, as far as I know, it's, it's incredibly strong. Tato's been taking the wiser engagements despite Drazina being completed. Why is Stark fighting there? Like, to me, Stark could have had the numbers, but he's taking poor fights. I think he needs to be more patient. He's sending them in two by two. This isn't Noah's Ark, man. This is... This is war. <laughs> this is war. Just wait. Just, just pull back. Wait till you have about 50 of them and patrol in. I think he's giving Tato an opportunity to climb back into this one. Uh, what I'd like to see Tato do... Obviously the priority is the hill here. But I'd like to see Tato, if he can find the time, get those relics in the north and raid with Lightcap here. And he's doing this! Okay, so he is raiding with Lightcap on the sides. That's something Stark's not prepared to deal with. So that could be a huge help. Okay, finally Tato's numbers champions are looking worse on the front. It's 35 military for Stark and 20 for Tato. And Stark is coming forward and attacking the castle, which Tato just rebuilt. Tato's not creating any more champions. He doesn't have the gold for it. And so this is looking really bad. Maybe it's Tato, like, shifting focus. Maybe he shifted focus to the light cav, and then he lost focus or lost res that he needed for the champions. But I think it's finally the Drazina champions clicking in. And it's 50 military for Stark. So here we go. Here's the production. Tato's golds are on the front. He needs more gold, but he'll lose the gold miners. Tato's in trouble. And Tato's hill, which he needed desperately to win this game or have any chance, is about to be lost. He's losing his production buildings. And Tato's down to 140 pop. It's 190 for Stark, and I think Stark will finish this off now. He's finished this DC on the extra gold. Tato might have two relics, but that is not going to be enough to answer the amount of champions. And Stark, the 24th seed in this tournament, will get the victory and go 2-1 up against Tato, who is the 9th seed and who many favored to win. The upset is on, guys. The upset is on. Stark is up two games to one. Wow, what a game. You know, there were... There were so it was a very high level game and it was so high level at times that anytime there was a small slip up, it seemed really uh, out there, right? A couple things like Stark, for example, letting those towers go up. That was sloppy. 
Uh, but overall, his boom was insane. His boom was insane. It's so easy to do with slabs. I actually think Tatu's economy is what cost him this game. He had a good position on the front. He researched longsword, so he invested resource, uh, resources in the longsword to hold the front, and then he didn't make any when he had the resources to do so. Then he didn't go to stone in time. He didn't have a castle up in time. I think that he had so much control, he could have done a bit more. Uh, once he got to Imp and Stark got Druzina, Tatsu did pretty well. It's just that that's that's where you need to have World Raiders. You, sh you ideally would not have champions versus Slavs who can research Druzina. Uh, for people who'd like to see what Drazina did for Stark there, uh, Tech Tree, here we, got, here we have it. Infantry deal, 5 damage in a 0.5 radius. So you have 50 champions with a blast radius. It's going to be very, very strong. 236 kills for Tato, 252 units lost. So it's not often you see someone win the, both of those categories. Uh, economically speaking, Stark had more food. He had more stone, he had more gold, Tato had more wood, but that doesn't help him with much in that matchup. And Tato lost that game, I'd say, in Castle Age, when he let up control. He worked really hard to get control in all areas of Ta uh, Stark's base. I think if he gets a castle up earlier, if he gets the World Raiders instead of the Champions, that's a different game. It scores down 2-1. to one. This is hype. Here's the Civ draft. Tato has Chinese and Japanese remaining. He just used Celts. And then Stark has Incas and Turks. So when the Civ draft happened, I was mind blown to see Turks and Saracens, not Civs you normally see picked for 1v1 tournaments. And uh, both Civs that you rarely see featured in pick Civ settings. This, this might be the first time I've ever seen someone pick Saracens and pick Turks in a 1v1 tournament. Ever thousands of hours and they picked those sieves so starks now up two to one do you pick turks here and hope you get the victory because you don't want to play with turks in the final game i'm not sure how you approach this one because tato might expect you to approach it that way either way i think that the sieves that tato has left are better chinese are a jack of all trade civilization japanese can kill incas and turks so I do like the sieves better for Tato, that's for sure. Uh, that's good for him because he's down a game right now. Yeah, I guess Turks would be picked in an arena tournament. But let's be honest, do we really count those? Do we really count those? Sorry, John Slow, I'm just, just kidding. I know there's at least two people in the Twitch chat who like arena. They're like, what did he say? What did he say about my arena? I don't know, I, I get a sick enjoyment out of out of that. Yo, Ninja Worm Danak, thank you for the Prime sub. Uh, Alba, I saw you ask if the alerts were on. The alerts are on, they're just silent alerts. Thank you for the eight months. He said, one month until our sub, baby. What's happening in this game? It was nuts, dude. It was nuts. Uh, Red Devils, nine, thank you for the Prime. Mr. General, J, thank you for six. And Seymour K, thank you for the new sub, guys. Let's do this. Oh, Japanese and Incas. Oh, so Tato had Chinese and he had Japanese. Stark had Incas and Turks. And I think if Tato could have chosen, he would have wanted this matchup. Because I think Japanese are fantastic civ against Incas uh, for a variety of different reasons. Incas, they're, they could also be seen as a jack-of-all-trade civ. And as always, it depends, right? You guys know by now. But let's go. Uh, Tato's in the blue. He had a kind of a funky map last time. This time around, it's much better. Main gold still has some elevation next to it, but it's not Mount Everest this time. So he's fine. He has a few wood line options. He has wood here, wood here, wood here. That's good. Uh, gold is fine here. I like this. He can town center that later on. Back stone. That's perfect. This gold, even good. So Tato will have no complaints. I look at Stark's map, and my first thought was, thank God he's not Turks. <laughs> thank God he's not Turks. Because look at his golds. His main gold is really far away. And his secondary gold is really far away. And if Tato ends up winning this, we will see Turks in the next game. And Turks heavily rely on gold. There is a gold here for Stark if you'd like to take that. 
Uh, the rest of his base is pretty good. At least on the left, he has some woodline options. And he has a back stone. Incas are a strong tower rush sieve, so that's helpful. Back berries, back zebras. And not bad, and I think we are going to see the lame. I know Pig. Stark sending his eagle forward. <laughs> he sees two groups of ostriches. Two groups of ostriches. Not just one, but two. And there is a forward pig for Tato, but Tato wisely going to that pig first because he knows his opponent might lame him. Now Stark, if he does encounter this boar, which I doubt he will, he shouldn't lame it. By the time he gets there, it would be too difficult a path, too difficult a journey. I think it's risky for Stark to try Man-at-Arms Towers here. Incas, if you don't know, their buildings cost 15% less stone. That would obviously apply to their towers, which makes them a very strong tower sieve. But to me, that's a risky play. That is a risky play versus Japanese, because Japanese can make man-at-arms to prepare for that, and they have the faster attacking man-at-arms in Feudal Age. Will Stark see the pig? Nope. If that was MBL, he would have went right to it, and the pig would already be back at the TC. <laughs> MBL just has a, a feel for it. But that's good for Tato, of course. It's good for all of us, I think, to have the players on even resources. And Tato will see the eagle here. He'll know that the eagle's roaming around. And Stark's still looking for it, but you know he has good scouting information. And he sees gold, stone, wood, gold. And what he'll look for now... Where's he... Oh, God, I actually thought he was going to dive bomb the TC. <laughs> uh, what, what he'll look for now is a barracks. If he sees the barracks going up early, then he might think Drush. If he sees the barracks going up later, he'll know it's man-at-arms. Three on wood start for Stark, though. Unless I miss something. Okay, he's building the barracks now, so maybe I missed something there. And he took one off wood for some reason. You're both building the barracks. At 20 population, that means man-at-arms for sure. So the beautiful thing about the the Japanese Civ is that... Sorry, just wanted to make sure Vil wouldn't die there. Beautiful thing about Japs is that they have cheap mining camps, lumber camps, and mills. So your economy is really strong behind any attack. Oh! Okay, Vil's loomed. We're fine. We're fine. Stark's building his barracks. I thought the barracks was going to be denied. So if you build a mill, you build a mining camp, and you build one lumber camp, you save 150 wood on that. Which helps you with farms, it helps you with, well, everything. Could help you with farms, you could build the archery range faster. It's a huge deal. And oftentimes you can't afford two lumber camps early on. With Japanese you can, which makes your eco a bit more efficient. And Tato's choosing the farm route. And he's going to this gold. Something That's the one Stark didn't scout, I think. Stark did not see that one. He's looking at this gold, thinking, okay, Tata must be on this gold. But he would be incorrect if he goes there. But he has confirmed that Tata is going for this strategy. And it gets difficult for Stark's eagle here in a moment, because Tata will get the extra attack speed and, and the speed overall. So, Stark, and eh, he'll distract, and he'll scout the gold. Okay. So he knows where all three golds are for Tato. Stark will go for not just three, but four man-at-arms in the next stage. And Tato will do three. I think. Research it. Yep. Oh, oh I'm sorry. He's, he's in Feudal Age now, so he'll research it here in a second. So Stark will hold against this. Tato needs to run, and he runs directly into the militia, who will be man-at-arms first. So, well played, Stark. Very good start for Stark. And I think the walling potential now could be nice. The wall on the left. <clears throat> wall on the left, wall on the front. More, It's more important to wall on the left, and then you know your opponent will send pressure in on the right. And Tato's house getting denied there by Stark's eagle. Stark has been so alert with his eagle. His starting scout has harassed so much this series. 
I think every single game he's been trying to pick off villagers. And Tato has added the archery range. So instead of adding the next man at arm, he's added an archery range earlier. Um, Stark, not interested. Not interested. He's bought himself some time here. So if he doesn't like this fight, he, he'll just run away. And then he'll prepare an archery range for skirmishers. That's a nice fight for Tato. Really nice micro from him. Making good use of the scout. Making good use of the archer. He wants to keep the archer alive, as Stark's going to lose his militia, or his man at arms, sorry, but well played, Tato. And now Stark, with two villagers, builds the archer range. He realized, okay, this is going to be a problem. I need a few skirms. So, oh, Stark's making more man at arms. Interesting. Man at arms, skirms, maybe a few archers for him. His gold is exposed. And Tato sees that there's still only two villagers there. He will definitely expect skirmishers now. Yeah, exactly. What Dave said. People are really confused. The uh, the scoreboard, the, the numbers behind the players' names, it's not their seeding in the tournament. It's their age. And Tato has been fooling us this whole time. He's He started playing the game when he was six years old. It's definitely not their seed in the tournament. Okay, it's how old they are. Just wanted to put that out there. Be very honest. Be very serious. We're always serious. Hey, he's just a kid. That's a hard fight for me to judge, but seems to me like Tato had Man at Arms in there. And so the Eagles that Stark created have got chewed up. And Stark is left with only skirmishers. I don't like Stark's position. He's lacking momentum. He's lacking military. He's, he's trying to make military. But if he makes eagles, they die to the three men at arms Tato has remaining. The skirmishers also are not in large enough numbers, and they're also not with fletching, so they can't deal with this. And Stark at least understands that he's in a rough situation, so he'll make a tower. Beautiful thing for Tato is he has the more flexible eco. It's very efficient because of the cheap mining camps and the, and the uh, mills and lumber camps. And Tato has full map control, so he can easily see what his opponent is going to do. That is not the case for Stark. I like how Stark is building his buildings. And the tower keeps him pretty safe as long as he walls that backside. But, you know, Tato overall just with much more control. So Tato, down here, market. I'm building a market nice and early here. Probably wants to use the market to get to speed up his time to the next stage. I think Tato uses the market more than any player in the top 20. He built that one pretty early. It's not a bad thing. I was talking to Tato about it, and I talked to other pros about it, and they say that players use markets more often than they did back in the AOC days. Um, and I think it's because civilizations have more power spikes than ever. So it's that much more important to get to the next stage. But still, that one was a bit early because he hasn't used it yet. He could have used the wood for farms, but I'm nitpicking. I'm nitpicking, okay? We're fine. That's a lot of man-at-arms from him. Stark is not making more eagles. He knows that would make more much sense. And he's making skirms, but does he have enough skirmishers to deal with this many man-at-arms? I don't think so. There are some weak ones in there, I suppose. And if all he needs is an archer or two, I guess. Yeah, maybe this is not a smart move from Tato. Sure, you create man-at-arms versus skirms, but it's quite easy for Stark to mix in archers with this. It's a very vulnerable unit against archers and skirms if they're microed properly. Uh, Stark looking better now. Definitely looking better. I think we'll have a slower castle age time. Probably 52 seconds behind. That's my prediction. Because he will probably use the market too. He has archers and skirms in mass. Uh, Tato has mainly archers, which could be a risk later on. And the farmers will be completely fine. I think Tato's man at arm investment will slow down his castle time. But maybe he'll go longsword in the next stage. We did see longswordsmen. We did see the infantry line last game. 
don't do a tattoo. I know you're tempted. I know you're tempted, but <laughs> don't run through. Uh, okay, now he sees the army and he'll run away after losing a man-at-arm. What's good about this is he sees Stark's army is at home, and he's halfway to Castle Age, so he could click up and run forward. Or he's already clicked up, he could just send his crossbows forward to the left now. So that's nice. These guys are taking one for the team here. Or taking a few for the team. And there goes Tato, he's running forward. I was way off with my 52 second prediction. <laughs> I was not even close! That was not close at all. Stark does not have a market. He still hasn't clicked up to Castle Age. He has a lot of skirms. But my word is this going to be delayed. I think if Tato sits right here, he could kill so much. He could hit everything on the wood line, most things on the gold. I guess the risk of that is Stark could run to this side and trap the army in there, but Tato will have upgrades. And Tato needs to win this game or he's out of the tournament. It's a single elimination tournament. Just sloppy play from Stark and poor eco management in comparison to Tato. Crossbow, Bod Canero, Elite Skirm, love it. And Stark does not expect this, but he sees it now. Wait. No, he doesn't see it. Hold on. He senses it. Yeah. It would have been a mistake to run forward. Right when Tato hit Castle Age, he doubled back. Because he knew, okay, he's got to be coming to me. And Nice micro from Tato so far, using his range. Stark needs to buy himself uh, two minutes with Feudal Age Army and Towers. If Tato gets too close, it's trouble. And if Tato gets more skirmishers here, he could leave the skirms to fight Stark's army and then send the crossbows to the wood line. I don't like it for Stark. He's trying to make eagles, but his barracks are just now coming up. He doesn't have a lot of momentum with numbers. Uh, even though Tato hasn't killed too much at the start of Castle Age, he's delaying an awful lot. And Tato's eco, what's this looking like? Second TC on the way. Still making crossbows. We'll send a group of crossbows and skirmishers to the right now. It is interesting because there's nothing of value to the right for Stark. Most everything Stark needs is on the left, or at least where, what he's utilizing right now. Tato will TC stone. So let's say that... Let's, let's just say that this game is close and Stark ends up with full eagle. Tato's on stone now, so he could go for samurai later on. But then Incas, they have access to slinger inside their archery range. It's one of their unique units, and that is like a hand cannon for them. So that would be a good counter to the... The, uh... What are they called? The Sams. Samurai. Tato's getting Bosal a bit late again. It's like been like every game it's late. Might have reasons for it. And I think he should back out. Yeah. <laughs> he thought about going in, and then he's left. But he's caused a ton of idle time. Stark has 10 idols again. The Tato gains a small field lead. Tons of T90 farms here for Tato. He's a real fan of the stream, if you didn't know. And Tato needs to be careful. He's a bit trapped with this army now. And he's trying to get out of here. Half of the group is skirmishers which will not help at all and these eagles do have plus two defense so now that they have the extra armor tato it'll, he won't be able to kill these easily and stark has somehow survived nice placement of the towers i still think tato had more time to do damage he, he could have hit that wood line he never did and now tato sending more crossbows and re reinforcement getting ballistics Fortunately for him, I don't think Stark's in a position to run forward just yet, because Stark will see that there are more crossbows and he'll try and deal with that. Yep, so now Stark will realize and say, okay, I don't know if I can go forward, and he'll run back. Which is giving Tato more time for his TCs to give him villagers, give him more resources. And he's on all of the resources he needs except his main gold. <laughs> That's where he'll probably castle later on. But eagles, in this number, with skirmishers and crossbows, is better. 
Stark is ahead with military at least. Stark is ahead. Imagine if he gets elite skirm as well. If he gets elite skirm with this many eagles, it could make life really complicated for Tato. I need to check Stark's eco. He's on two town centers. He could go to a third. He has the res for it. And Tato's sending more crossbows forward, but there's skirmishers in this group. Like, Tato, does he want to be fighting this one? Probably not yet. Oh, he has ballistics, though. Stark doesn't have ballistics, so nice job there, Tato. Man, this is so close. This is so close. Stark sends eagles to the gold, realizes there's nothing there. We'll send the, the units in. That will annoy Tato. And Stark is getting more and more map control. Um, and he will TC the gold with the map control he has. Tato's stone count, 400. So he's almost there. He's almost where he needs to be. But Stark can take the hill. I would love to see a forward siege workshop from Stark. Or just camp the hill. Siege workshop would be so sweet, though. And Tato has quick walled off his gold. He wants to kill the eagle warriors. He will kill the eagles if they stay. Stark attempts to run through... Tato quick walls that off. He also has his elite skirms there, so he's okay. And he also has a Maganel. So while Stark ran in, he's just lost his military. And I think Tato can gain his hill back. Let's see. There's the CG workshop from Stark. It's not on the hill, but it's close to it. And man, does Tato need a castle there. If he gets the castle there, he's in a sweet position. Without it, it's risky, man. I think he's scared because he knows he can't deal with eagles. So scared that he might build the castle passively. If you try and castle this hill, you could run into enemy Magnals and eagles at any point. And Stark comes to the left. He hits the other gold. Tato is going to struggle for gold if he doesn't get a castle on his hill. I wonder if he'll settle for a castle here instead just to have access to some gold. He's getting thumb ring as we speak. He's going to the gold. There's a mess of eagles there. And Mackinels will be on the way as well. I don't think Tatsu can fight this one. So he can two shot the eagles. Thumb ring's not complete yet. There's got to be a Mackinel coming from Stark behind here. And there is. He gets the choke point, And Stark really commit to this. This is best case scenario for the crossbows from Tato to sit in the choke point. Stark, just for map control, is going to throw away eagles to hold this. He knows it's important. Keep in mind, Stark is Incas, so he could castle this on the front. He has cheap stone buildings. That would include castles. And Tato's building his own castle here. But the Maganel is here from Stark, and Stark will deny that, and Tato doesn't know where to build his castle now. And Tato has to build his castle where the expired farms are, not securing his gold, He's almost out of this gold. He can barely take this one. And Stark's timing on everything is correct in game three. He's getting here at the perfect time. He's getting momentum at the perfect time. And Tato's in big trouble, I think. He needs his gold. And it's not as if Samurai can save him now because Stark has kept so many crossbows alive that he could still kill Samurai if they're Castle Age. Okay, Tato sees this. This could save him. And he gets a Maganel shot there. Could be more incoming. Does Stark know about that? He doesn't, but he'll find out here in a second. Wow, what a game. Tato making a few samurai. And Stark will see there's a TC there. And he'll probably see there's gold miners. He will. Yep. But I think Stark should up to Imp. Because his eco has been untouched. I think he should up to Imp. Castle this hill or castle this hill. I kind of like this one because it's... Uh, well, I'm undecided. I, I think you build this one, then you leave yourself more exposed at home. But anyway, build a castle and start trebbing down Tato's castle. And oh god, Tato just killed all the crossbows and skirms that Stark had. Jeez. Well, let's check Tato's resources yet again. Can he stabilize and get up? He'll build a tower... On the left gold. So he's getting his gold back. He uh, kills the Maganel with the one samurai. Stark builds his castle more safe at home. 
Yeah, again, if he built a forward castle, even if he got it up, it wouldn't protect himself. So this is the better move. And does Stark go into Arbalest now? I feel like Arbalest could be better than Eagle. Because obviously Tato's making Samurai, so perhaps you go into Skirmishers and Arbs if you're in Stark's shoes. Tato, for the first time in a long time, tries to go to Tato's base. And, uh, well... He could do damage, but I think it's just about buying time. Buy yourself some time if you're Tato. I'll tell you what, Stark needs to be holding some control over this. Because Tato has a tower here, he could have a castle here soon, and he'd have this additional gold. Tato has more vills at the moment. Only concern for Tato is the main gold, and the fact he's not an imp. Which is, <laughs> there are two pretty, pretty big concerns. It's not like, I say only, but it's not like that's a small thing. Pretty big deal. And there we go, Tata will click up and he'll place the castle on the hill. So he solved the imp problem, he will solve the gold problem. Man, if Stark was planning on going crossbow and skirmisher, he should have never lost this army. He had a lot of units that he could have upgraded and used already, but he lost it. And I'm not sure why, I, I never expected him to even run in there. I was talking about something else because I figured that he would run back, it would be the wise decision. He did not run back, but in similar situations, all players have their golds. All players will have two castles. Uh, let's let's talk about relics. There are some relics on the map. There's three on the left side here, here, and here. There's also a gold there. Uh, uh, Tato has the other gold with that TC. But yeah, Tato shouldn't shouldn't be able to move in much further here, and he'll lose most of his samurai, if not all. Yep, he'll lose all of his samurai. This feels like a tournament final or something, you know? Like, how close it is at the moment. The decision-making from the players has been really good. Stark now getting Bracer, and he's getting uh, Chemistry, so... Well, he's, I'm sorry, he's not getting Chemistry, but that will be on the way. And obviously, that's the counter the Archers that Tato has. Tato will try to go Samurai, and then Stark will have Arbalest as well. Or Slinger. Though I, I prefer Arb, because Arb are a bit more useful. Uh, than the Slingers in other situations. Yeah, for Tato, it is definitely an elimination game. Tato needs to win this game or he is out of the event. This is only round one. And when I saw these two players matched up, I was thinking, man, that's bad for Tato. That's so bad. To be ninth seed and face off against Stark is so difficult. And the winner of this faces Hera, so it doesn't get easier. But Tato has three castles producing Samurai as he hits the Imperial Age. And Samurai are beastly, and they're also fast. Stark doesn't have any mobility. But okay. Stark sends the Trebs forward. And he has Slingers in the group with the Skirmishers, and he's going after Tato's most important castle. And meanwhile, Tato sending the Samurai not back to kill the Trebs, but into Stark's economy. Um, will he kill the TC? I guess he'll go for the TC, but that doesn't solve his problems on the front. I think Stark would prefer to lose the TC and kill this castle. Plate mail armor was not in for Tato and he was doing that as well, so he actually just loses the samurai. Didn't have the armor upgrades, those were just castle age units. And it, Tato will lose his castle! Stark has slingers, he has skirmishers, that counters everything Tato has at the moment. Tato's in trouble yet again. He's building another castle though, he's not finished yet, this is... This is an incredible game. The thing is, I don't think that Tato could have used the Samurai to kill Stark's trebuchets. And the logic there was probably that he had already run so far, so he, he didn't... He wanted to get some value out of that surprise, and he didn't want to run all the way back. Uh, however, the better move would have been to at least keep the Samurai alive, because as you can see, Tato has given Stark such a big military lead, at least where it matters, and that's with the right units. Tato would need to go for his own skirms with the samurai now. So he needs elite skirm to kill the slingers and the skirms from Stark. So he's still fine. 
And this would mean that Stark needs Arbalest in the mix. I think... I don't know! <laughs> it's still tough because he'd need to kill Tata's Skirmishers, so... I, I don't know... I don't know if that makes sense at all. Arbalest might not make sense. Stark doesn't have an answer to Skirms. Except his own Skirms. He could try Onager. I don't see that working. And Tato... I think he'll stabilize yet again here. 170 uh, population. 180 for Stark. And Stark is getting plate mail armor. And uh, does he go champion now? Or is he going to attempt eagle? Maybe he goes champ. I mean, if he had access to samurai, I would say Stark goes samurai, but he doesn't. So the next best option, it would not be eagle. It would have to be champ. An elite samurai on the way for Tato. He's using his skirms versus the slingers. He will go in to fight this as elite samurai is about to complete. And that can be a good fight for Tato. This hill is, is extremely important. But there's no, there's no stone for Tato, so he can't castle there. Stark wants to go Onager. I don't know if that will work. It's all down to how many samurai get killed by slingers. Uh, there was quite a few that went down there, but... You know, Onager is a risk with samurai. Samurai will destroy Onager quickly, but... Stark seems confident enough that the samurai will die to his slingers. I so rarely see these sieves interact that I don't know how to judge this one, but what I will say is Stark should not have sent the trebs forward. He just lost two trebuchets. And Tato is winning the fight! Tato has killed two and make that three trebuchets. Make that four trebuchets. Could be all five. And look how quickly that turned. Look how quickly that shifted. The Slinger is just not strong enough. And Tato's killing them with the skirmishers. And this is before he gets full upgrades on his skirmish, by the way. Now, a good addition here would be some trebuchets for Tato to start taking down these buildings and castles. He needs to keep doing more of the same. Uh, getting the extra golds, getting the relics, also a priority. Stark's very good at those things. He has this, uh, this gold there. T Tato can't send in his samurai to kill onagers every time. Because the slingers are there. So he does need to be cautious. Because <clears throat> slingers are doing work versus samurai. It's just the skirms that Tato has. That's the problem for Stark. Capped Rams, for a while it would have worked, but now that Stark has Onagers, it gets complicated. And man, this map is split 50-50 between Tato and Stark. The game is close. Stark does not have the military numbers. He only has 30, and, and Tato has 66. And okay, Tato sees the gold as well. But Stark is going Doubt style, where he'll have extra vills to have more resources later on in the game. He understands that this will go on for a long time. Uh, does Tato see there's a castle here? He doesn't. Stark does see that, so maybe he can trev that down. This is a stalemate. And Tato realizes this is a risk now, and he will go for his own Onager upgrade. Both players, zero relics. And both sharing the extra golds. And Tato should probably get the relics, Stark should get the relics, especially these ones on the left. Both should see that. Stark will get one. It's not like Tata wasn't in a position to do it. He just hasn't done it. And now he's left the all-important hill because he doesn't have the Onager upgrade. Lightcav wouldn't be a bad addition for Tato. I don't think it would be a great addition, but it wouldn't be a bad addition. Someone asking about that one. Some type of mobility is what's needed. And also, Slingers aren't particularly strong against Lightcav, so it could work there too. So Tato researched Capram. It didn't work. He was having success with his skirms, but his opponent has onagers. He goes for his own onager upgrade, but because he's attacking uphill there, he doesn't kill that one. And uh, Tato is falling behind again. He needs his gold. He needs the siege workshops to produce more onagers. Oh, this is tough. I notice on that left gold there, the extra one that Stark has, Tato's on it. This is the importance of the hill, guys. 
And Tatsu's population is still higher, but it's because he has more military. He could lose it all in one single fight. But at the same time, Tato has killed all of Stark's onagers, and the only thing left behind are slingers. And the slingers will now die, so Tato's pushing back up the hill. And he killed these villagers. Tato needs relics. I, I, I'm surprised, you know? Like, Tato and Stark. Like, Stark I can kind of understand because these relics are more in the battlefield, and he doesn't see this one. But... Tato sees two of them, he has not collected them yet. His priority has been focusing on the fights. Oh, and, and Stark's made a push over here. He sent his three trebs around, and he's killed Tato's castle, and he'll go for the next one if he sees it. Okay, so he will kill this. It's just a matter of time. He will kill that castle. Tato, while he gains the hill, he loses the right side, which is arguably more important now. Who knows? Tato's onagers are in the minimum range of the slingers <laughs> from Stark. So both players are forgetting about their armies there for a second. Yeah, Tato needs to treb this castle down from Stark. And what an interesting push from Stark. Stark's been winning with less military. It's really fascinating. And Tato has a lot of skirms, but he hasn't been able to push with them really. But, you know what? Stark didn't know Tato's castle was there, and Tato defends with his own traps almost immediately. And Stark's castle will go down. What a game, man! What a game! So for Tato, he's fighting for his tournament life. For Stark, he's fighting to move on to round two. Tato has this hill, but he can't seem to push. And honestly, both these civs just kind of suck at pushing, you know? This is... This is about positioning, and it's a slow grind to, uh... To finish off this one. Both, I guess Incas, they have Siege Ram. But Siege Rams will of course die to Onager and Samurai. Uh, Japanese don't even get that. Light Cav now for Tato. And is that going to be the key here? Some mobility. That's something that Incas don't get. They don't get Light Cav. And we mentioned it earlier. The importance of raiding. The importance of speed. The Japanese Light Cav are, are decent. They're decent. And Stark is getting couriers now. And Tato's shifting back over to the center. Still no relics for Tato. Okay, he will get one. He can get one, he could get two, he could get three. This one will be tough, but not if he kills the castle. Tato has good resources, despite having less fills. Stark has more food, but I'd prefer more military if I were him. This is weird how they're jockeying for position with the trebuchets. And Stark's coming back to this side now. But I think if Tato gets enough light cav, he can kill the skirms and slingers here. Oh, eagles. Okay. Eagles for Stark. I don't like the move. I don't like the move. Not when a few samurai can patrol in front of the skirmishers. Tato has this random trebuchet hiding in the trees. And Stark didn't know the castle was here earlier. I think he tried to sit his units on stand ground to kill Eco, but he's found out the hard way there's a castle here, and he's lost his army. Tato has 90 military. It's 30 for Stark. As Stark's lost the castle, Tato's still standing. Tato will see this castle. Uh, he's unfortunately going to lose the trep. Wait, did Stark just wall in the trep? Stark just walled in Tato's trebuchet. It's perfectly safe. Thank you, Stark. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you for walling in my trap. That's hilarious. I, Stark is running out of steam now. Stark is running out of steam. Tato just needs to hold on the right. And he needs to continue to push against these castles. And I don't think that Stark can kill the amount of skirms and samurai that Tato has. Tato has gotten one relic. We can assume that he'll go for the next one. Okay, there's the onager. I guess that's the logic. Trap the trap and then kill it with the onager. Um, but... Nope. The Onager will not kill it. And once one castle goes down for Stark, prob it could be two, right? It could be two, and Tato gets the all-important hill. Look at Tato's castle, queued up with Samurai. Um, his stables are queued up with Lightcap, so he's not 
having resource problems. And some big onager shots for Tato. This trebuchet is still going at it, baby. <laughs> this treb is the MVP. That's hilarious. <laughs> Can we give Tato and Stark MVP if Stark helped Tato with the treb? Is that, is that how this works? Oh, and, and now Stark loses his onager. I think this is Tato's game to lose now. This is Tato's game to lose now. Stark is overboomed. Stark has 150 villagers now. Normally you start deleting some. But I have to say, Tato just held on, man. He held on for long enough. It was really tough at some stage. The one stage with the gold on the hill, that was rough for him. And the early slingers were tough to deal with. <laughs> this Trev is trapped. <laughs> which is still cracking me up. And, and Stark's trying to kill it. <laughs> Stark's trying to kill it. But Stark will lose his... He will lose his Trebs on the right. It's just a matter of time, I think. And sure, he might finally kill the trebuchet. Oh no, he just let it He just let it out! He just let the trebuchet out because he chopped the trees! So the treb survives! That's ridiculous! That's, that's hilarious, man. Well... It's kind of tough for Tato to raid Incas to death because Inca villagers are affected by blacksmith upgrades. But I th do think that Tato should soon start sending a few light calf into the economy. Uh, like Stark's trying to do. Stark is attempting to send eagles into Tato's economy. It's better for Tato to start that process. And then if he starts it, mainly on the left-hand side, which is the only open area, then Stark will be focused on defense. Stark is not dead yet, and his population's 190. He does have two relics, and he's raiding here with the eagles, which Tato might not be able to address, so I shouldn't call it yet, and I did say a couple times that I thought that Stark would lose the right-hand side. He's not losing it. I don't know where he's getting the resources from. Maybe it's the fact that he has 156 villagers now. But he is running into a constant problem. Tato's out popping him. And while Stark is winning the right side, he's now losing the center and he's losing the left. And so if Tato continues to do this and keeps his vill count good and solid, he will eventually kill Stark. He could do Stark a couple favors by killing villagers, but it's the castles, it's the archer ranges, it's the siege workshops that Stark needs, and he's losing them. And Stark lost his trebs here to Tato's samurai, and Tato has kept his castle up. Will we get to a game five? It seems close. This has been an amazing series. Stark is not giving it up yet. Tato still at 90 military and he's microing with skirms versus onagers. He kills the castle. Stark is producing military. You can hear him get housed, but he's he's actually has the population. So really that comes down to the fact that he doesn't have the space to produce when he's trying to. I don't think that... I don't see what Stark can do to change this now. He needs a big ball of eagles, but the eagles would need to catch Tato off guard, and Tato is keeping the, uh, the skirms protected with samurai. Oh, by the way, Tato's at two relics, and the third one's right here, so they're even there. Stark at one point was at five, maybe six castles. He will soon be on one. Just one single castle. Uh, Tato... Needs to get Samurai to the left side of his eco, though. He could lose some bills there. But Stark could lose everything here. What an insane game. Best game of the day for sure. Best series of the tournament. Stark has 150 bills, man. It's insane. It's insane. Is he still creating them? No, he stopped creating them. Which is probably a good thing. Because he needs population space to defend. The skirmishers here will die for Stark. That won't help. Not versus the light calf. And while he's killed a few farmers, I think what he's done is he's given Tato more population space for military. Tato's vill population has dropped, but his total population has gone up. And now he's at 80 military. Oh yeah, Stark's losing vills on the wood line. He's losing vills on the farms. He has no response to this. I think this is Tato's game. Yep, Stark's not killing enough on this side. Tato hits 20,000 score in the game. And he needs to... Just, just polish Stark off now. 
The only risk is that Stark might somehow get more pop space for military and push back after Tato kills his Vils. <laughs> you see this many Vils die and you're like, oh no, that's GG, but Stark will still have more. So I guess if Stark had enough units queued up in his buildings, he might pop up. You know what? He's kind of doing that. He's kind of doing that. Look at the military count. It's at 70 now. And I'm not so sure Tato can push here. This could be a mistake for Tato. Every range that Stark had was producing there for a moment. This is a crazy game. Can Tato kill the buildings? He just needs enough time to kill the buildings. Kill the TCs. Kill the archery ranges. Kill the barracks. Okay, Stark's population is lower than it has been in a long time. It's 160. Still 200 for Tato. And Tato did have enough samurai to keep the eagles away from the skirm. So it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be for him. There's blinking lights everywhere. Tato could really use this military forward. I hear he's raiding as well. One hundred and eleven vills for Stark, but he doesn't have the resources now. His ranges are not producing at all times. Pikeman, of course, not really going to help him against the skirmishers here. And now that Tato has the samurai here, he will he will keep the skirms and the pikemen and the eagles away. At least he should. <laughs> he should. And Tato has the third relic. If you didn't notice. What a game. What a game, man. Tato has about 65% of the map, 70% of the map. He has 115 military now. He could still delete villagers. He has plenty of wood. He has his farms queued up, so he could still delete some lumberjacks, but it's not necessary, I think. With the military lead he does have, it's just... He just needs to continue doing more of this, and Stark will eventually eventually lose too much. Earlier, Tato killed a market. Stark rebuilt one, and I'm fairly certain that this is that market. <laughs> I think he was selling the extra food and wood he had. So, Tato should kill that. And this is a sign that you're in trouble. When you're collecting zebra, one hour and 16 minutes in. Stark is a man of builds. He knows his build orders. Apparently, this is a build order. Collecting Zebra. You know what? It's like... It's like the final meal for him, you know? He wants to taste something better than... The bland farms before he dies. Is that one samurai going to kill all the treps and the onager just won't care? What a Why is the onager not firing? Does he have that on no attack stance? What?! Wait a second, you dumb onager! Why would you attack then? No, I would be tilted if I'm Stark. Like, what are you doing, man? That onager decided to attack after the job was done. But this is game over. Tato has the win. Tato has the win. He's killed the eco out here. 76 vills now for Stark. Stark will lose his final castle. He has a small little corner for economy, but it is a complete disaster for him. 115 military from Tato. What a game. What a game from Tato. What a game from Stark as well, though. To go this far into a game and lose has got to be a heartbreaking. And the crazy thing is, is players could choose any civilization to put in their draft. Any civ. There were two weird ones. Tato chose Saracens. He won with Saracens in game one. Stark chose Turks, and he will have Turks for game five. So for whatever reason, Stark chose Turks in a Civ draft, probably because he was confident, and he felt like he could beat Tato, and then he could he could basically waste Turks in the first round of the tournament. Game 5 is going to be Chinese versus Turks, and Turks are seen as one of the weakest 1v1 Civs in existence in Age of Empires 2. So just imagine this, you're 2-1 you're up, you're thinking, okay, this is going all according to plan. This is all part of my plan. I'm going to beat Tato 3-1. Then, you know, I, I don't have to use my best civilizations in round one. I can go into rounds two. I could choose better civilizations against a stronger opponent. That's what Stark and I think Tato were both thinking, funny enough. And uh, <laughs> then you don't win 3-1. It's tied 2-2. And you're playing Turks against Chinese. And Chinese 
has probably the most counters to uh, to Turks. So 810 kills for Tato in that game. Um, incredible match from both players. Look at the resource counts there. Insanity. Over 100,000 food and wood collected as a whole between the two. Technology-wise, the research times, the research amounts were crazy. The map exploration was crazy. I'm really happy this is going to game five. And as I hoped and as I expected at the beginning of this series, we will have a game five in round one of King of the Desert 2. Okay. So again, I've already told you what the Sifs are. We have Chinese and Turks. This is going to be tough for Stark. Turks have gunpowder. Chinese have a full archer line to counter that. Turks have uh, amazing cavalier and camels. Chinese, they have cavalier and camels. Turks get free hussar. Chinese get camels, chukunu, halp. Turks get bombard cannon. Chinese get monks, which can convert the bombard cannons. Can anyone think of a way that Turks have an edge going into this match? I can't feel bad for Stark because he chose Turks. It's a bit disappointing. Hey, if he wins, man, can you imagine if he wins this game? It's certainly possible. Turks are a strong sieve. They're a strong sieve if they get access to gold, but... Oof, man. I mean, this could easily be a really disappointing ending for the series and Stark, but it could also be a mind-blowing one if Stark wins. Stark should go Cav Archers. That is maybe the one thing that Turks have over Chinese. But still, Seedram and Chukunu would kill that. Carp, these games are live, my friend. These games are live. Yeah, I think maybe Tower Rush into Janissaries could work. Take advantage of Janissaries in Castle Age before Chinese get to their strengths. Uh, but anyway, guys, I just want to give you all a shout out. Uh, this tournament just began. This is round one. And we have 3.5k people watching the stream. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here and having a good time. Uh, Maganels has been gifting tons of lucky individual subs today. Uh, and I don't know what your count is over the past week or two, Maganels, but thank you for doing that. Thank you for spreading the love. Thank you for the positive comments, guys. Uh, Daffins Rock and Infamous Blaine, thank you guys for the subs and resubs. Battle Tutorial, thank you for two. I hope it's more, man. Eldry with a year and a half. Pants Party with a new sub. Mackinels with another gifted sub. Thank you, guys. You are all incredible. <clears throat> so. 60 seconds left to game five. Winner of this best of five faces Hera in rounds two. Who is another player who I talked a lot about before KOTD2 started. I think that Hera went into this tournament with confidence. And he's in extremely good form so whoever does win this is going to have a tough opponent waiting for him stark needs to hope for the best map ever he needs to hope this glitches out and he has fortified walls <laughs> he needs to hope for regicide fortress on his side and tato to have arabia on his side goldfish union i think that both players chose weird sieves, Turks and Saracens, either because they have some master plan, Tata won with Saracens, or because they genuinely believe, or believed, that they would win, and then they wouldn't have to use... They, they, they believed that they would win the set, and then going into rounds two, since you can't play in rounds two or round three with the sieves you play with in round one, they would have stronger sieves available. That's my, that was my thought. For Tato, the logic has worked because he, he won with Saracens and he won't be upset about not having Saracens. For, for Stark, of course, it just puts him in a really awkward spot now. And look at his gold. He's Turks. Turks need gold and main gold, secondary gold. Uh, where is the third one? Uh, uh, where is it? I, I know gold. Uh, oh, it's over there. Okay. I'm pretty far away. And yeah, one wood line. Both players have their restarts. Tato's gold is, and stone is bugged. So we'll, this is a gift from the Age of Empires God. Stark will actually get an admin re. I believe that's why the, the pause has happened. So because one of Tato's stone piles is bugged, they will redo this. Um, fortunate, man. Fortunate. Maybe Stark will get his fortress. 
Now, if if Tato Stone wasn't back here, I think they would technically have to play this out. Normally, bugged resources, I think with gold is, if five or more tiles are blocked. So it would just be unfortunate for Tata because four tiles are accessible here. But yeah, I imagine that admins are having a discussion and that's where we're at right now. Maybe Tats would say no, <laughs> but but they're telling him, you have a stone back there. He's Chinese, so Chukunu are a big part of his plans, I'm sure. No, the stone is not accessible. He would have to chop through it. This is not what you want as Chinese. And it's not like the rest of Tato's map is exceptional. If the main gold was back here and he had wood on the front to wall with and not no hills, then maybe he'd consider saying play on, but there's no way. There's no way. The hills really hurt you here. The hills really hurt you. And you have your other stone there. Maybe if the other stone was on the back. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. Now, just watch. As Dave says, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. I think I've been casting with Dave for too long. So if Dave's not here, Dave's thoughts and input come into my brain. There will be an admin re, and then Stark will get the best freaking map of all time. Watch. <laughs> It'll happen, man. And then Tata will call a restart. And uh, then uh, then Stark gets angry and, and quits. And that's how the best of five ends. We have to finish this on... Uh, Next weekend. Well, let, let me double check. Um, yeah, they've gone back. They've gone back. Not even worth looking at it. Yep, so bugged stone, admin re. Yep. So they will replay this. So we have a few minutes to wait now. <laughs> Tata says, I thought it was the gold, not the stone. <laughs> well, yeah, you didn't see it back there, buddy. You didn't see it back there. What's up, Jairi? Welcome to the stream, man. What's up, dear Chris? What's up, Dive Bomber? So uh, that was an admin restart because of a bugged resource. Players do get one restart. Uh, they can use if they don't like their map generation or they just have a rough dark age. They have to call that before four minutes. Both players still have their restarts. Um, so there is potential for that, but that's the way it works. Stratone gifted another 10 bucks. He said, had to donate one more time just because of a great stream. Team Stark. All right. Is, is Ducks here or is anyone who can run a poll here? I'm really curious to see who the audience is rooting for going into this final game. Uh, you know what? Screw the poll. We don't need a poll, okay? Polls are, are unoriginal. Guys, just type who you're rooting for in the chat, okay? So Tato or Stark, I'm curious. And also, I do like during these big tournaments to see chat blow up. Jeez, that's crazy. The votes are in. It's 50-50. And Dave's one of those guys who voted for someone other than Tato and Stark. Okay. I think that, and just doing the math here, I think it's 69% Tato and 31% Stark. I I think. Seems like it. Now, we don't need to make a poll. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine, guys. I think Tato is obviously more well-known. Tato plays for Team Secret. Stark is kind of one of the... I don't want to be disrespectful to him and call him a villain that, like, I think he's a villain, but he doesn't have quite as many fans, and I think his conduct in the past has, has rubbed people the wrong way, and he plays that role well. You know, he, he plays that role well, he has a bit of a swagger to him, a bit of a chip on his shoulder when he goes into games. And he's obviously performed here. Jairi, I already said hello, man. What's up? I just said hello twice to Jairi. Jeez. Do I have to say hello to everyone else twice? What's up, TechWiz? Adzo? That's a lot of people. I can do it, I believe. Terelez, thank you for the nine months, man. All right, I, I lied. I can't. I'm sorry. That's a lot. Happy to have you here. You can't see me. I'm throwing you a salute. Hello. It all came at once, guys. Blame Jiry. All right, guys. Game five. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you would have seen the whole set. So you're good to go. You're, you're all 
you're brought up to speed. And let's look immediately at Stark's map. Uh, not good. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the last map in a different location. Forward main gold. This gold's really far away. This gold, I mean, it's not great. Tato has two back golds. And, oh, he does have two forward stones. I don't know if this will be played out yet. Obviously, players will, will realize this is important. And if there's anything that rubs them the wrong way with their map, they will consider calling a restart. However, I think one of the strategies that could potentially work is an all-in tower rush from Stark. And if Tato has his stones like this, then Stark could do some real damage. And then, so you go tower rush, and then you play defensive, and you go into Janissaries. That's the one thing that could work uh, really well against Chinese. But I, I don't think the maps are that great. We'll see if they play it. We'll know to the at the four minute mark. There's a slight spectator delay on all games. Uh, we will look at Tato's map though. Again, two back golds pushing in the zebra now. One, two, three, four, five woodline options. Stones, and then the other gold is out here. So pretty far. The stones for Stark are good. This stone's not, but that's not important. This is the stone that's good. So for that reason, I like it. And the wood lines are nice and close to the TC. Honestly, the gold's questionable, but if he were to wall like this, let's say he walls here, here, and then in towards the town center, he secures a gold, a stone, and all his woods are fine. So I, I guess we'll see. Now, Chinese are extremely strong in other ways than Chukunu or, or archers. They, they pretty much have a full tech tree. So I, in 1v1s, we see them open up with either scouts or they go drush into archers a lot. So that could be an opportunity for Tato. Drush, delay Stark, mass those archers. And then what do you do when you don't get elite skirm against masked archers? You'd have to commit to full knights against Chinese who also get pikemen and camel. So you have to avoid that somehow. You could go scouts and just go full scouts. This is being played out, by the way. No restarts from either. The cool thing about Turks is if you can protect yourself and you can use your mobility, sometimes you can go full scouts and feudal. You would need walls. But full scouts and feudal, and in the castle age, you could go knights and camels and hopefully outmass any archers. The struggle is if your opponent gets gets archers massed before you hit castle age, then you have no response to that. Tato has one carpet under his TC. Stark has two. Adminry, well, uh, less carpets is actually better. So, I don't know what it is, but I've done the testing. Spirit of the Law is confirmed, so that's the way it works. Don't ask me, okay? Ask Spirit. Ask Spirit about the carpets. Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm not good at that. Ask him about it. It's got to be scouts here for Stark. It's got to be scouts. He's only pushed in one zebra, which is not ideal. I, I think you need to up the feudal as fast as possible. Now, Tato is likely expecting either a tower rush or he's expecting scouts. YOLO trush is really only something Vivi could pull off and on a good day. So I think it, it will be scouts. And so Tato should either do scouts and perform better or he should consider going man at arms. But yeah, it will be scouts for him as well. Wait. Awesome stuff. Well, I'm really tense at the moment. I imagine Tato's base, seeing as it's a bit more wallable at the start, will make it nice for him. There will be an easy wall off here. A few houses, barracks, stable on the front here. You might even build it in front of the wood line. Tato's clicked up first, and he has more villagers. That's the beauty of Chinese, because you start with six villagers, especially on the King of the Desert Arabia, since you have your goat underneath your TC. You can get vills pumping out of your TCs pretty quickly. Another reason Chinese are better than Turks. The absolute scenes. If Stark wins this with Turks, I, I will be mind blown. Like... In such a big event, in such a tough matchup to choose Turks, just crazy. Regardless, I would like to hear Stark's thoughts on it.
The only explanation I can give is he forgot to choose his sieve and it got chosen <laughs> randomly for him by the by the uh, the sieve draft program, or he was confident. I'll use my Twitch Prime sub if Stark wins. Ouch, man. So you're saying you don't love me if if uh, if Tato wins? Jeez. Well, hold on. Let me message Stark real quick. All right, I got it. We're good. He'll help me out. Maybe he wants to go Cav Archer. <clears throat> he could transition. He could transition. So perhaps go Scouts and then Castle H make Cav Archers. But normally Cav Archers are pretty risky to transition to. Okay, there's the stable. Stark has fantastic scouting. Tato has fantastic scouting. Actually, hold on. I lied. Stark doesn't have the best scouting at all. So fortunately for him, his opponent's not going for man-at-arms. Very forward stable from Tato. And Tato will be sending a spear forward. Right into a lion. The wood lines are walled up, so even if Stark would have been surprised by man-at-arms, he would have had the walls there. Smart play. And he can leave them up. He has enough villagers on wood. They don't need... The new villagers don't need to go to lumber right now. Playing very safe, as he should. And... <laughs> oh, we have a lion rush from Tato! Ra ra ra. That's the, the lion... version of woo-woo-woo. Okay, Tato sees that Stark has his scouts inside the stable. And this is a bit unfortunate, actually, for Tato, because that spearman could have got some use. Uh, you know what? There's a weak villager on this farm, and Tato scouted it earlier. I really hope that somehow that weak villager dies later on to the wolves. Unlikely now. I thought that a player like Tato would lure the lion to that vill, but he didn't. That would, that would have been a play. <laughs> that would have been a play, though. So Tato almost fully walled. And I think Stark needs to make more scouts. I think he, he can't transition easily into skirms if need be. So perhaps you're more aggressive here. That way you don't give your opponent time to transition into archers. And he has quite a few scouts being created. He's being patient for the start of this. These quite a few scouts. And this is around the time when someone would transition to archers if they were planning on it. Not something that Tato has to do, but it's something that Tato could do. And I believe he just scouted that Stark has more scouts than him, so he'll make a few more. Okay, Tato's going to gold. Normally means mining camp, a villager two goes, collects the gold, and then archer ranges start coming out. Stark is towering his gold, which tells me he'll go very aggressive in the next stage because it's a preemptive tower. Hmm. Well, Tato should not fight. He doesn't know exactly what Stark has. He knows he's full walled, so he figures he should run out. He should not fight. And he thinks twice about it. Or, or he thought twice about thinking twice. Okay, he's running forward. It's just a matter of time. Hopefully there's no holes here. It almost seems like there's a hole there. I'm really scared, man. <laughs> that that elevation makes it difficult. And Tato sees that Stark is not at his base. He tries to attack the villagers on the gold. And the villagers just hops inside the tower. Well played, Stark. Also, very nice quick walls there on the gold. Tato, no archery range. I hear the blacksmith. No upgrades for either of them. Not even bloodlines for Stark. And Stark can't get in. He should realize that. And probably shift back home. And Tato, as long as he doesn't make a mistake, he can gate behind here. Yep. And Stark will run. I think they'll have similar castle times. And so far, the fact that Stark is Turks... It hasn't... It hasn't hurt Stark yet. I don't like the tower, though. The tower hurts him... Oh, he's building an archery range. Will he go cav archers in the next stage? He has to be. I mean, he could go crossbows as well. Interesting. 
Tato could get in here. He has a lot of scouts. He could surround a palisade wall and kill it. Here we go. Stark needs another palisade. Wow, what a play. Just to realize that he wouldn't be able to get here in time and to build a new one was very nice. And <laughs> these lions are waiting. They're on the prowl. And Stark clicks up to Castle Age first. Tato will be right behind him. This could not be closer. And Tato has not seen the archery range. He's added his own ranges to go crossbows, though. And Stark's going three ranges. He'll try for Cav Archers. Okay, so here's the risk of Cav Archers, guys. It's a big, big risk. You need to have... You need to be in Castle Age to start massing them. And they're expensive. So not only does he need to wait till Castle Age, but he needs to mass a bunch of them when he gets there. Whereas Tato can make his in feudal while he's on his way to Castle Age, get a huge numbers lead, and then instantly upgrade them when he arrives to Stark's base. So it's about how many units Stark can mass. If Stark's able to mass units, then it becomes quite a good situation for him. But it will be a struggle. But Tato also is expecting the, uh, the camels and knights. He hasn't seen the archery ranges. Funny enough, I think Stark's tower tells Tato where to go here. If that tower wasn't there, I think Stark... Or sorry, I think Tato ends up going to the, the gold, where Stark could possibly defend in some way with the scouts. The vulnerable area for Stark is actually his wood. Again, no skirmishers, nothing to protect that. He can't build a TC, and Tato will go directly there. So that's interesting to me, but now Stark's in Castle Age and he's making his Cav Archers. Oh, Stark definitely has the Eco Balance for Cav Archers, for sure. And he will go for Fast Ballistics. So now Tato, if he didn't see the ranges, will probably think there's ranges because he sees the, the University. Okay, University denied. Tato's getting Crossbow and Bodkin Arrow. He shows up to the wood line where the units are trapped, and Tato will also send the scouts in. So the villagers have to run, they'll run into crossbow fire, and they'll run into scouts. Waiting for cav archers is a huge, huge risk. And Stark just got wrecked, and the lions are at the, are at their uh are at the farms as well. Tell me that weak farmer's still there. <laughs> Tell me the weak farmer's still there. Okay, never mind. Stark kills the lion. But yeah, that's the risk, and all of a sudden Tato has a seven bill lead. Huge momentum shift. Stark decided a long time ago that he was going one town center here. Oh! 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 Go, Lion! You can do it! You can do it! Damn it! Well, Tato will be like, he'll be liking this. His crossbows are, are going for the Cav Archers. Light Cav for Stark, they don't have upgrades, so it won't mean much after this attack. And Tato will be smiling because he killed a few Cav Archers, a few villagers. And he probably has town centers. Well, no town centers. He realizes the risk. Okay, two. He realizes the risk of letting Stark snowball here, and he's adding a third range instead. Interesting. Well, if Tato... Sorry, I just needed to think about this. It's been a long day, so I'm, I'm trying to talk when my brain hasn't processed things. Tato is kind of in trouble in the sense that Stark has a lot of CA. And he also does not have TCs protecting his wood lines. He has the eco lead, but he needs his own ballistics upgrade. Now, you could consider camels an imp. Heavy camel with the defense upgrades really nice. Camels are not going to be a, a great thing to rely on if you're Tato. Uh, as you can see, that camel's gone down quite quickly. And then Tato knows that the Cav Archers are there. And this is still a situation where the crossbows are a bit better than the Cav Archers because they have more range. But Stark has ballistics. So let's let's see here. And Thumbring's on the way for Stark. That's the big upgrade because Cav Archers fire significantly faster then. Remember, if Stark does not kill Tato within the next 10, 15 minutes, if he doesn't do a lot of damage, Tato will have quite a few more villagers. And Tato's going for Elite Skirm. Which is the one thing, uh, or not the one thing that, that Turks don't get, but they really struggle with dealing with that. I'm holding out, Gorg. We're fine, man. We're fine. Tato seems to expect Stark to come to this side. 
Uh, is Stark adding TCs now? He's on stone, so it's he's not too far from that. Yeah, second TC, okay. And Tato will relocate his Vils, and he'll build a TC on the left. And that's a really important area for him because I don't like his current wood lines. It's really sloppy. Tato's eco is not pretty, despite having a few more villagers. And we'll find out in a bit, because Stark is massing more CA. He's also going to the other side. Imagine if he would have been there a bit earlier. I think he'll get there right when the, the TC is completed, though. T90 bootleg. So, as you can see in the scoreboard, Tato is the higher seed. Um... Uh, I, I didn't really ask many people, um, other casters or other people in the competitive scene, what they expected from this. But at least I felt like Stark's seed um, didn't, necessar didn't necessarily translate to his skill. I genuinely believe that they're evenly matched, and this series has shown that. But over the last minute or two, what has Stark really done with his cav archers besides keep Tato chasing him? He hasn't killed anything. It's a 20 vil lead now for Tato. And Tato is getting Thumbring now himself. And he's also sending his crossbows forward. So he will attack Stark. Stark couldn't kill anything on this wood line. He can't kill anything on this wood line. He really can't do damage. And Tato thinks twice about going forward and instead comes back to hit the cav archers. And oh! Stark doesn't realize. One, two, three, four. And five Cav Archers down, almost five anyway. That was great for Tato. So Tato has a huge Vill lead now. And he also has the military lead. And what's Stark doing? He's adding his third town center, but he's later than Tato with everything. Still no answer to Elite Skirm. It's not like Stark could make a light cap for the Elite Skirms because Tato has the crossbows close by. This is kind of what you would expect like there's always going to be a drop off when you have turks and 1v1s man stark has got to be kicking himself for choosing turks in this draft i i still can't believe it the cav archers are an exciting move for sure but it's not it's not a move that should work if tato plays this correctly i say that as tato kind of fails his patrol for a second he micros down the knights and stark gets us around now, Tato gets a few Cav Archer kills before the Cav Archers from Stark arrive. And that is a win for Stark, at least with that fight. It's definitely a win. Cav Archers are always going to win that when they're getting close. They have more HP. After that, though, it's 22 military versus 13. So Tato's still better positioned numbers-wise. And I think in the next wave, he will win. Yeah, and he will. So Stark needs something more in Castle Age because if Tato gets to a castle, gets to the Imperial Age, this is over, man. Turks can't kill Elite Chukunu. They they just can't. Chukunu Ram destroys Turks. Honestly, Arbalest in general just destroys Turks. The lack of Elite Skirm is the big thing. They also don't get Onager. And... Stark Siege Workshop was denied out here. Another Vil kill for Tato. And Tato's adding more ranges. And uh, honestly, guys, Stark, we talked about the AoE gods in the previous game and how uh, the AoE gods helped him because he got a new map gen and all that. He needs the AoE gods right now because this is not looking good for him. He's behind in every category. Villagers, military, and options. And that normally adds up to a defeat. Dave, I think Stark's only way back is if he goes full CA, full Knights, and gets a Maganel trade or two. Like, Maganels could really help him because he's fighting crossbows. So yeah, spring style, essentially. And Tato should recognize that the only way he loses this game is if he loses his army. So he's, he's actually running away from the hill. And maybe he'll sit here. So I do think if Tato sat on that hill, that would still be a risky situation for him. Yeah, he just needs some patience. Just needs a bit of patience. Nice shot from Stark. Very nice shot from Stark. Tato. He'll kill the Maganel. And he can now fight. Yeah, Stark, that's not enough. I think with the, with the amount of crossbows that Tato has, he's still okay. 
It's close, though. Another Maganel is on the way. Stark finally has some map control. If he can get the hill, if he can pressure, maybe, just maybe, guys. Tato needs to click up. He has the resources. He's missing the siege workshop. That was delayed. Now he needs to click up. There we go. Oh, uh, don't let Stark in here, Tato. Gate. Stone gate. Stone gate. Stone gate. Stone wall. Nice play. If Stark ran in, that would be a headache. It's worth it to lose those villagers. It's so, it's so much better than uh, losing the rest of your eco and, and not being able to run forward like this. And he has skirms inside, killing the cav archers. Well played. He has... Oh, Tato, please no. Oh, huge shot from Stark. Tato needs to micro this down or he's in trouble. Another shot from Stark. Are you kidding me? Fortunately, Tato's able to micro, but he lost half of his army as he's halfway to imp. Now, I still think he can stabilize. I still think he's fine. He just needs to wait for Bracer, just needs to wait for chemistry. But that is the gift that Stark needed. He needs a few more. He needs a few more. Yeah, and they need to be pretty big gifts. Big, expensive ones with a big red bow because <laughs> Tato is still pretty far ahead. But uh, making Tato fans sweat a little bit, I'm sure. Goodness. Three more Maganels from Stark. Three more Maganels. Where's Tato's castle going? It's going here. All right. He really wants to avoid the hill. Again, I think it's good he didn't castle that hill. It, it's really important, but it's too risky to go to. He needs to wait for his upgrades. Upgrades will come in within a minute. Tato should not fight until then. When he does fight, he'll have about 40 military. Stark is looking for the military. He, he's saying, fight me. It's like, uh, Tato? Tato, 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 Tato. Okay. My goodness. Like, he almost mispatrolled his whole army into the Machinels. He still could. Bracer and Chemistry need to come in. I was just going to make a joke and say that Tato was playing, like, uh, Floyd Mayweather, and then he was he was just running <laughs> and dodging punches at this point, and he's trying to outlast Stark. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty pretty good way to compare the situations. But he almost ran right into a punch, and now Stark realizes, okay, I have to do damage. Oh, it tapped so quick walls the cow archers. They path into more shots. They'll path into the castle, and surely that's all she wrote. Surely that's all she wrote. I don't see what Stark can do now. Turks versus Chinese in the Imperial Age. How can Stark win this one now? Tato should send some of his skirms back to deal with this. He didn't. Uh, again, a bit peculiar, but on the front, Stark can't deal with this. He's not clicked up to Imp now. He can't kill Arbalest as Turks. And sure, a bit wasteful from Tato, but of course he has the resources to send skirmishers back. And there they are. And now Seedram on the way for Tato, and Arbalest Seedram cannot be stopped in this situation. Just can't. Stark had any Civ to choose for his last pick of the draft. He went for Turks. I'm still not sure why. I've said it a million times by now, so I'm sure you know, but the only way he moves on in KOTD2 is if he wins this somehow. And he's getting Guard Tower. He's, he's hoping to defend. Uh, he's making light calf. But... Uh, it's not... Not def not offensive option. It's just defensive options. Light calf can help with the rams. You know, that's nice. Tato could lose some Arbalest and Skirms to the Maganel, but he'll kill it. He'll kill the Maganel. Yep. And still maintains his... 63 to 9 military lead. And now Chukunu will probably start coming out. So Seedram, Chukunu. Tato, if he if he wants to stick with Arbs, could do that. I uh, could also go Halberdier. I see him researching Pikeman now. Again, notice how trash is really important. Tato's skirmishers have saved, have saved him this game. His Pikemen have saved him this game. The lack of trash is why Stark is behind. And Stark's going with Towers. All right, so... I mean, he will hold on for a little while, but I think he's delaying the inevitable. He can't imp. Tato will mass siege rams come forward to this TC. 
And Stark is, is hoping to stay alive in this tournament with Mackinels, guys, but... With Tato's position, with the amount of resources he has, the amount of villagers, the amount of tools he has... In his toolbox with Chinese... This is his game now. 200 population. Killing more villagers. Stark is only continuing to try because it's the final game in a best of five. If this is game one, he's called GG already, and he says GG. He taps out. Stark is out of the King of the Desert 2 tournament, and Tata moves on to face Hera. What a best of five, man. Of course it came down to that. Of course it came down to that. Tato and Stark had weird Civ selections in their draft. Tato won with Saracens, and then Stark lost with Turks. Crazy. Crazy. It comes back to the draft in the end. What a series, though. What a series. Um, you know, Stark, if you're listening or you rewatch this, man, you played really well. I love watching Stark in tournaments. He's like the king killer. When Stark plays in events, he's one of the few guys that could pull off upsets. And he was the 24th seed in this tournament, and he came very close against Tato. Um, like I said, he just has the mentality to him, and he's very good late game player. He knows how to stall games out. But you know, I have to say, it's... It's got to be disappointing for him and frustrating for him that he went for the Turks pick and he lost with it. I, I, I believe there were many civs available to him there that could have worked. Um, he had Mayan, Slavs, Aztecs, Incas, Turks. He didn't have Franks. He didn't have Berbers. He didn't have Malians. Uh, he was confident. He was confident and he felt as though he could probably get to round two and have those civs available then. Congratulations, Tato. And... If Tato can give Stark games like that, he's going to be given Hera a run for his money in rounds too. Subbottom says, so besides Vietnamese, what civs do you think will be left over for most players at the end? Well, it's complicated. So looking at Tato's civ draft, um, Tato played five games. So as far as I know, the civs that are unavailable to you in the few further rounds are the civs you played with. So for Tato, it's a bit more unfortunate because he's played five games. For the guys who won 3-0, they have more civs available. So that it's hard for me to say because there's 30-plus civilizations. It's hard for me to really narrow down what they'll work towards. But um, I will show you guys the brackets now because this will be an amazing tournament and the games will only get better as the rounds go on. And uh, here we are. So Hera moves on. Again, we'll face Tato. We still don't know who some of these other players are going to face. There's a lot of round one to complete yet. But just an update on results. Hera won 3-0 in round one. Max won 3-0. We casted that earlier today. Yo won 3-1 versus Daniel. Leary won 3-0. And BL won 3-0 versus Miguel, which was a pretty big surprise. Uh, Miguel performed really well in Hidden Cup and other events, but perhaps not very active recently and not in form. And then Vivi won 3-1. Um, so this was the best series in round one so far. It, it's been an incredible tournament, despite the, the sweeps. But it will just get better now. It'll just get better. Round two is going to be nuts. And then, of course, we work our way to the finals.